the session and we are waiting for the participants. Okay. So uh, actually uh, this, 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 this mega lecture talk is a, a, our special, uh, you know, edition because we are uh, having anniversary. Uh, our beloved campus, Ayan Madura, is having anniversary, the fifty-six, and uh, we we hold this uh, to celebrate uh, our uh, anniversary, the fifty-six. Wow, Ibu Nurul Nur Fadila. Congrats. <clears throat> yes, thank you. Yeah. And uh, you know, Yayan Madura is uh, about yes, uh, moving I'm here. from Yayan to Uin Madura, so university there. Oh, hello, how are you? I'm good. Uh, I just had lunch. <clears throat> oh, you had got lunch. What did you have? Yes. Is just it had. still rice, right? Rice or no, rice. not rice anymore. <laughs> All right. Okay. So where uh, where are you here? Uh, is it in campus or in? Um, beside, I mean, near campus. Yeah, canteen, right? Yeah, canteen. Warung, warung, warung. Warung, okay. warung. Okay. You want to see? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> How are you, Mr. Tarik? Prof. Tarik. Professor. Okay. Eight How are Bubaro. you? The man. Bubaro, of course. <laughs> Bye, bye, I miss bye, you. Bye, bye. Thank you so much. Bye, bye. I miss bye. you. Miss him. Oh my God. Yes, I miss you so much. So I'm really wow. thankful for EIN Madura that uh, they gave me the chance again to lead you for today <laughs> as a moderator. I'm very happy to be part of her. Thank you, Dr. Mutaina, as well for the invitation. Yeah. Welcome, bro. Okay. So we're about to start uh, in another 11 minutes and we are waiting for the participants. So here we have uh, Dr. Atikulwa, uh, MPD, as uh, the director of postgraduate program. Uh, I think, yeah. Ini sudah, sudah datang semua ini, Pak, data-data uh, yeah. okay. speaker. It's okay, Pak Waki, because it is online on YouTube, so it's okay, we, we, we could um, continue the program. Okay. Saya di perjalanan nih. Oh. <laughs> Mau pulang. Okay, Sudah selesai okay. Mas Rafi. Pak, Pak Ateng, may, may I know that you and your um, undergraduate um, um, sarjana Masa. pendidikan Bahasa Arab ya? Pak Ateng ya? Saya anak kedua Anubia. Hmm, that's one. Oke, okay. ada Prof Tarek itu dari Saudi. Oke, okay, Valut, ya yeah. Ustaz Tarek. Alhamdulillah khair. Aku Um, are you waiting uh, still? Pak Wafi? Uh, Mutmaina, sorry. Uh, can you hear me now? Is my uh, connection uh, stable? Yeah. Can you hear yeah. me? It's yes, clear. Sir. It's clear, Prof. It's clear. Clear, Professor. Yeah, because my my internet was not clear. Uh, yeah, but it's clear. That's why I changed um changed it to a more stable. Alhamdulillah. Uh, so, Prof. Tarik, uh, I hope you still remember that we are invite you also as editor. Uh, so, this journal, 
Uh, this is belong to this. Ya, ya. Ya. Dan actually there are two um, three journal in minds that that um um invite from Tarik as um the editor and also the reviewers. Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so much for the links. You're welcome. Uh, it will be your, uh, you know, uh, sadaqah tun jariah tun virtually. <laughs> yeah, sadaqah tun jariah, ilman yang tafa' bihi, waladun salah yang ta'u lahu. Amin, amin, amin. Okay, so eight more minutes, we're about to start. So while waiting for uh, the participants uh, coming in. I think they're having a lunch break, right? Right now, lunch break. Yeah, yeah, lunch break and uh, lunch break, and also uh, we 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 are a uh, holiday here, uh, so that's why we got a little bit difficult to, to invite students to coming in because they are holiday. They enjoy the holidays. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. You work it too hard, brother. You work it too hard. <laughs> yeah, that's that's it. <laughs> no, no vacation, just virtually. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna travel with my family <laughs> to Turkey in mm -hmm. three days, or travel to Turkey with my family in three days. So we're so excited, just like mm -hmm. to visit uh, a, a place where it's not as hot as Saudi Arabia. <laughs> uh, is it Cappadocia? Cappadocia? <clears throat> no, we actually we can only visit Istanbul, and then we can visit Trabzon, which is like mm -hmm. a very beautiful, beautiful city full of nature and you know absolutely gorgeous place to visit so we'll be there for a few days and then you come back to Istanbul we're just going to go there because of the nature and the weather basically that's why we, we want to go there uh if you want to enjoy the nice weather just visit Indonesia this is a very beautiful weather uh, yes uh, Indonesia is great it's just too far uh it's just too far you know, not really not far good. let's say eight hours I guess Oh, no, nine, no, nine, 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 nine hours. Nine hours. Nine hours. Nine hours. Yeah, nine yeah, hours. Nine. Yeah. But it's it's not yeah it's not convenient. But Turkey is convenient because it's only like about almost three hours and twenty minutes. Oh, and I so see. So very convenient and visa is electronic visa, so it's really easy for Saudis or like the Gulf citizens to travel there. It's like you can mm -hmm. go like in the morning, you can fly eight in the morning or seven in the morning, and you're there at ten in the morning. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh, uh, you know, very short. Yeah, and also the tickets is not really expensive. <laughs> uh, it's really quite convenient uh, to travel back and forth from there. Yeah, that's why if uh, you know Saudi Arabia is let's say two hours from my 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 town, so I will visit you for. Uh, many times yeah. yeah yeah absolutely absolutely that's the thing and now like uh arabs don't, don't like to visit dubai because it's too hot dubai egypt is too oh, hot as well dubai jordan is, is too hot yeah it's, dubai is good but it's just too hot you know at this time of the year so no one likes to go and visit <laughs> so they have the hotels prices right now in dubai it's really good because it's, it's, this is the lowest season in dubai so summer is a low season. It's not the high season. This is really funny. Usually summer is the high season, but actually, in the, for the Gulf countries, summer is the low season <laughs> for us here. Okay. Oh, well, that's nice when we are talking about different, uh, you know, different places and different time and also different season. And, uh, you know, uh, one said that uh, so, my place is good, but others said that your place yeah, is good. <laughs> so yeah. I think that's it. Well, uh, Tatrana is, from, is in Kuwait, right? So you're Tatrana, you're from, in Kuwait right now, right? Or in Kuwait, Pakistan yeah. or Kuwait? Extremely yeah, hot yeah, in Kuwait. Yes, I mean, yeah. Kuwait is almost similar. We have similar climate, of course, similar conditions. It's we are like sister countries, basically. Well, I heard it's hotter actually in Kuwait because some of my friends in Kuwait they say uh, the heat goes up to fifty and above, you know, Celsius. So it's very very hot. Yes, in, in the desert. Yes, in the desert. Yes, in the desert. In yeah. the desert. Yes, it goes up to fifty. Maybe yeah. more, but yeah, and some, yeah. sometimes, um, yeah, it has been 
recorded even in the cities. Yeah. They, uh, yeah. When you record the temperature uh, in the car, it is going up to 52. Most probably outside it is wow. so close to that. And, uh, are you, are you it's pretty hot here, going, just like Saudi you, Arabia. Saying, <coughs> I don't know which which part yeah, yeah. of uh, Saudi Arabia you are based. I'm from in, Jeddah. I'm from Arabia. Jeddah. I'm Jeddah. Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Jeddah. So Jeddah is Jeddah. hot and humid. Hot and humid as well. So and you are <laughs> the, the you are the guardian of uh, Haramain then Jeddah. Well, it's not. It's just like the 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 seaport, the entry city. Of uh, Mecca and Medina, because there are no airports in Mecca, so a lot of people like usually have to go via Jeddah. So mm -hmm. it's but now in Medina they have international airport, so yes. you can fly in Medina, which is really good. But before, like everyone used to have to fly into Jeddah, but nowadays you can fly into Medina. But a lot of people actually prefer to fly into Jeddah. So you go mm -hmm. to, did you go to Mecca, and then after the last few days, to sort of like to go and visit Medina. This is very nice and convenient. And, and now there are trains, actually, fast trains. Yeah. Take you from Jeddah or Mecca to Medina. It, it will take you like around two hours and a half by train. This is very, very nice train, very good service. Mm -hmm. uh, I use it, I use it myself. Um, They're absolutely beautiful. It's really quite good. It's as good. Yeah, it's as good as the one in, in, in Europe. Okay, uh, well, everyone, so I think uh, we are about to start uh, the session. It's about uh, two more minutes, but I think it's okay we start it uh, because we are uh, having uh, three hours to finish our our session for keynote. Well, uh, okay. Bismillah rahman rahim I think we are about to start uh, the session. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Peace be upon you all. Uh, good afternoon from Indonesia. Exactly, I am Madura, Pemekasan Madura Island, Kiskiafa, Indonesia. And it is now uh, one o'clock uh, in the afternoon. Honorable Dr. Haji Saiful Hadi, uh, MPD, as Director of IAN Madura. Uh, Honorable Sir Abdul Ghafur, as the President of Indonesian Education <coughs> Share to Care Volunteers. Distinguished uh, keynote speakers uh, from Saudi Arabia, we have uh, Prof. Tariq from Dubai, from Bangladesh, uh, from Syria, Kuwait, we have got uh, Ms. Hanna Khan. From Turkey, uh, we have got uh, Dr. Uh, Gul Erkol Bayram. And from Indonesia, we have uh, Dr. Mugmaina, Dr. Andy Asrifan, and also uh, Dr. Siswanto as our dean. Uh, beloved committee participants, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Abdul Wafi as Master of Ceremony and also of the Chief of uh, Language Unit uh, IAN Madura. Allow me to say and welcome you all to our uh, Mega Lecture Talk uh, Series uh, 3, uh, 2022, by the theme Strengthening Moderation and Innovation in Rapid uh, Digital Transformation for Society uh, Era 5.0. Dear brothers and sisters, for letting you know that uh, this mega lecture talk uh, series three is our special edition as to celebrate our 56th anniversary of beloved uh, Institute Agama Islam Negeri <coughs> or Yayan Madura. Wishing Yayan Madura to be win Madura, let's say in 2025, I guess. Uh, dear everyone, lecture talk is our series talk conducted twice in a month. Uh, by language unit Yayan Madura and mega lecture talk here is uh, conducted uh, once or twice in a year. And lecture here is the abbreviation of L E uh, C T U R N E. L means here language, E here education, C culture, T technology, uh, U universality, R religion, and E environment. Well, ladies and gentlemen, without a further ado, allow me to read the agenda for this lovely afternoon. Mega lecture talk, uh, Series 3, 2022, uh, keynote speaker session. The first is opening, uh, and then continue to singing Indonesian national anthem, Indonesia Raya, and opening remark uh, under the name of uh, Rector Yayan Madura. And the last is closing, and after that, we are moving to keynote speaker session. Well, uh, let's start our program by reading Basmalah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. And singing Indonesian National Anthem, Indonesia Raya.
Problem connection. That's okay. No problem. Um, well, uh, dear brothers and sisters, we're moving to the next opening remarks by director of Yayan Madura, but uh, it will be delivered by Mr. Abdul Ghafur. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Pak Wafi. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. On behalf of rectors, Dr. Saiful Hadi MPD. A very good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Honorable Dean of Tarbia Faculty, State Islamic Institute of Madura, Dr. Siswanto. Honorable Director of Postgraduate Program of State Islamic Institute of Madura, Dr. Atikullah, SAG MPD. Honorable Head of Center of Language Development, Mr. Abdul Wafi, SS MPD. Honorable President of Indonesian Shadow and Volunteers. Honorable Founders of Patola Palalu, Dr. Andi Asrifan, Honorable Country Directors, Indonesian Education Share to Care Volunteers, Dr. Mutmaina, all the international education share to care volunteers all around the world, Honorable All Resource Person, all keynote speakers from all over the world. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me in this opportunity to welcome all this conference participants by first praying a grateful of praise to the Almighty God for all his blessing, grace, and mercy that have made us possible to get in this Zoom room and also YouTube room with the excellent condition and holds. Ladies and gentlemen, my deepest gratitude to all the committee of the virtual conference of Miguel H. Talk and student conference for handling this event with the theme strengthening moderations, innovation in rapid digital transformation for society era 5.0. That's going to help for today start from 18 up to 19 July 2020. It is such an honor for me as the directors supporting this international conference with the keynote speaker from all over the world. Professor Dr. Tariq Elias from King Abdulaziz University, thank you. Dr. Gul Erkom Bayran, Department Tour Guiding from University of Turkey. Dr. Mohamed Mohiuddin, founder Global Philanthropic Planet Foundation, Bangladesh. Dr. Rana Khan, Academic Coordinator at Al Queen College, Kuwait. Dr. Ima Abdullah, Laila Rahal Al Afani, founder of President Horse Business Gate, Dubai. Dr. Andi Asrifan, the founder of Patola Palolo Foundations. Dr. Mutmaina MPD from Yunusman Flausi Barat. Dr. Siswanto, Dean of Tarbia Faculty, 
Dr. Atukula MPD, the Director of the Graduate Program of EAN Madura. Dr. Lili Nurlaili, Dr. Jennifer Oyster, MPhD, Philippines, Louis Page Gill of Philippines, Jeremy Nures, Philippines, and other speaker from Indonesia, and all moderators, Ibu Santiana, Silang University, Ibu Eka, EAN Curup, Ibu Eva, EAN Madura, and also Ibu Nurul Fadila from EAN Laksumawi. Ladies and gentlemen, and all the parts of the conference, the world today is facing many challenges. We must address the sustainable agenda to deliver improvement in efficiency and resource productivity. Together with public and private sectors, non-governmental and intergovernmental organizations, scientific engineers, and also the responsible to build a better life and safety for society through the application of knowledge of to convert disasters into product and also services without compromising the ability to the future generation to cope with their needs. We should be clearly aware to important of interdisciplinary cooperations. We need to promote cooperation within the profession and also with natural and social scientists and the public in the creation and application of the knowledge for enhancing nation productivity and competitiveness. Curriculum and also pedagogical reform in engineering, education, and continuous provisional development to encompass wider social and also ethical concerns are needed. International cooperation is in engineering facilities, for example, in education to exchange of knowledge and promote technological application for safer and well being future to support human life sustainability. In accordance with the vision and mission of EA Madura, this international conference is one among many efforts to make the vision and mission come true. This year, conference is how to celebrate the 56th anniversary of EA and Madura. It is part of our concern on contribution of science and technology for enhancing nation productivity and competitive fitness in Indonesia. As academic culture, this event is going to have a great contribution for all the people of the world and for all experts to share and care about the strengthens, moderation, innovation in rapid digital transformation for society 5.0. As the new information of the result of the conference could be applied by academician and researcher in doing their research. Hopefully we all can significantly give more contribution to the nation advance in the not too distant future to all of these things thanks and participants, thank you for being here. Welcome and enjoy the conference. Thanks for your attention. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evenings for all of the world. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, uh, Sir Abdul Ghafur, for giving us a very beneficial and motivation and also enthusiasm to do better in the future. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear keynote speakers, and also the participants, I think uh, this is the end of our uh, opening session, and then we are moving to our keynote speaker session, and it will be led by uh, our beloved moderator, Dr. Nurul Fadila, and Ms. Santiana, uh, SSMPD, and also Dr. Eka, I think will be replaced by Ms. Eva. Uh, Dr. Nurul Fadila, are you there? Yes. Yes, yes, I'm ready. You will be with our beloved uh, professor, uh, Elias Tarik, for the first. So enjoy your time. Make sure that he is okay. Yes, of okay. course. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for uh, Mr. Abdul Wafi um, for the chance. Um, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity, Honorable uh, the Rector of IAIN Madura, and also the Vice Dean of uh, the Faculty of Education and Teacher Training, uh, Dr. Abdul Bafur, and Honorable uh, uh, the Head of uh, Language Center, Professor a Professor. It is uh, actually a du'a. <laughs> Abdul Wafi. I mean, I mean. I mean, And also our beloved uh, sister as the um, uh, Dr. Maud Maina. Maud Maina and uh, also Dr. Andi Asrifan. And I'm um, for the 
the head of postgraduate ya Mr. Atik Mr. Atik <coughs> yeah honorable for you uh, sir and I'm really thankful for the attendance of our beloved um, eminent speakers today and I will be I will lead uh, two of our eminent speakers uh, Professor Tarik Iglas and also Gul, uh, Gul er Erkom Erkoy ya sorry uh, Dr. Gul Erkol Bayram. I still couldn't uh, mention it well. I'm so sorry. Yes, yeah, um, and good. yeah. <laughs> and uh, the first as the first um, speaker today, uh, we will have uh, Professor Tarik Elias. Professor, are you okay today? How are you? I'm very good. Bye bye. Thank you so much for asking. Yeah, Thank you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and it is really shown from your face. You are happy. You are very fresh, even though it is already uh, still. Uh, the coffee, it, the coffee. Yeah, because it's, it's the coffee. coffee morning, yeah. <laughs> coffee morning, yeah. It's the early work, yeah. It Co is still early eight, coffee morning. Eight, we'll, we'll do the we'll do the trick. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, I wish that I could I could have a coffee with you too there. <laughs> Maybe next time. <laughs> one day. You're welcome. You're welcome. One day. Yeah. One day. One day in Mecca. One day in Mecca. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Allah. Uh, okay, I mean, I mean. Professor Tar Elias is from um, King Abdul Aziz University, Saudi Arabia. Okay, and I also, I welcome uh, to all of the participants who has uh, attending here, who has been attending here, and we will have uh, Professor Tariq Ilyas uh, presentation for um, 20 minutes, Professor. <clears throat> and it is including question and answer. Yes. Um, are you ready with your or? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, I can share right now. If you let me. Yes, yes, you can, can share, share right now. now. Okay, cool. I will share. Well, uh, please welcome Mr. Uh, Professor Tarik Elias, and the floor, the screen is for you, Professor. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Uh, well, first of all, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, to everyone. Uh, I'm very happy and very grateful for the kind invitation to be part of like another conference in Indonesia. With, uh, I, I thought it would be in love uh, with uh, with Indonesia itself. Uh, hopefully one day I will come and actually visit each one of you uh, first. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. I mean, inshallah, I mean. So today's uh, presentation, it's basically, it's about the digital uh, uh, era, but at the same time, it's it's something to do between the COVID-19 pre and post as well. So the, the title of my presentation is Exploring the challenges and solution of web-based education on the learner experiences post COVID-19 pandemic, a cognitive psychological approach. So this is the outline of the presentation. So first uh, we'll talk about the shift to virtual classroom in the education institute in the time of COVID-19 and how this has affected actually uh, the, the, the current education in, in Saudi universities. Number two, we'll talk about the challenges and the solution of web-based learning space, but uh, also we'll tap a little bit on how the cognitive psychology can influence most uh, modern teaching practices in web-based education. And finally, we will tackle a little bit uh, on the right of what uh, I actually term, I have coined myself, it's called a new pedagogy in the time of 21st century pandemic era offering creativity and solution to the excellence in learning experiences. So basically what I'm trying to achieve here is say, uh, yes, COVID-19 has came and affected all of us in education, but actually has actually benefited us in terms of how we became creative in using the digital uh, sources that we have recently uh, around the world. So this is a shift, this is a clear shift uh, to the normal pedagogy. Yeah. The current phenomena of remote online education has left its instructors feeling out of space. As the setting for both physical presence and disciplinary gaze has shifted or better cancelled for most cases in online classroom. Bear in mind that we still have actually online classes happening in Saudi Arabia. So there's a lot of shift right now. Even right now in the summer summer uh, uh, courses, we have 50% uh, of physical attendance and then 50% of online uh, lectures as well. 
So, I'll, and then we're going to move into the balance of power, which has been shifted in favor of the students. So, this is something that we need to acknowledge. This is something we need to appreciate at the same time. And how this power, like the, like the data used to have in the classroom, has shifted because of the online uh, digital uh, reform. And then we'll talk about how we claim the hierarchies of structure of the virtual space has developed into confusion and power struggle in the teacher-student relationship in the virtual space. So if you can notice, all of this has been actually research written and by a focus in, and in the context of Saudi Arabia. So student and remote learning. The current generation of students is highly immersed in multimedia that they think it's part of their national landscape. So basically all our students, uh, they are glued to their iPhones, they're glued to their smartphones, and basically what they think, this is actually their, their, their landscape. This is their game ground. They, they are actually connected with the national landscape of the internet. It became part of who they are, it became part of their identity. However, one can argue that today's students are too modern to learn in a traditional setting and perhaps too aware to simply take teachers towards uh, for granted. With a click of a mouse, students can today access a wide range of information and find answers to their questions on their own. So there's a question that I always like a uh, big, uh, how we can, uh, as a teacher, as instructors, how we can face this challenge this is a challenge that we need to be aware of uh, as instructors. The students can actually access everything uh, remotely and everything without the help of the instructors. So how we can actually have a balance, how we gain the power in the classroom, how we think that we as instructors still are uh, disseminating our knowledge the right way that the student can actually achieve in the classroom, mm -hmm. also outside the classroom. So, who are our students? Well, this is a very clear that we need to ask. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, okay. So, uh, I will just continue right now. Thank you. So, findings have led to the emergence of several terms that attempt to describe and better understand the mindset of this generation, including terms such as net generations, uh, digital natives, techno savvy generation, and Google bodies. That's actually something I have actually called them right now. It has become apparent that using technology in the classroom can improve student level of motivations, which in this sense is indicative to student engagement. So basically, if we introduce technology in the classroom, if we ask them to bring the laptop, if we have incorporated technology into teaching itself, we are actually motivating the student to take part of the discussion. So how, how the teachers feel these days? So the Zoom or not the Zoom, sometimes the COVID-19 era. So what happens after COVID-19 era? Do we still Zoom or not? How this may affect the classroom pedagogy? Are we in control of our teaching, the online or virtual space? As much are we in control of the physical space as well? Can we gift uh, and be creative using a PC screen and our remote pedagogy practices? Nowadays, uh, we have a lot of smart classrooms at universities. So basically, uh, we are encouraged as teachers, not only to, to use technology, we are being awarded for the best use of technology in the classroom. So there's an award actually right now in most other universities. So who is the best teacher who, who could incorporate technology in the classroom? And this is actually a very nice, hefty uh, prize uh, for teachers with, with, with the best use of technology. So <clears throat> the last question, do our students think we are doing a good job still? Um, when I ask my students, like, you know, about the information I give them, they can easily access that information in the internet. They can usually read right now e copies of the textbook. So our job is to facilitate this knowledge. It's, it's, it's actually to incorporate critical thinking in the classroom. So critical thinking is something that can't be done uh, uh, solo. 
uh, by 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 the student her, her himself. So our our job as instructors, we try to incorporate technology, but also to incorporate critical thinking and how they they could do that in the classroom instead of doing it themselves. So the shift in paradigm for the teachers, we place that traditional power and discipline that the teacher used to claim has been uh, transferred in reverse panoptic gates on the part of the students who are in control of the virtual classroom and its time and its space. The invisibility of static of physicality, in some cases, of the student in the current online learning compared to their visibility pose a serious challenge, not only to the teacher authority, but also to her, his start of teaching. Um, nowadays, we, we did a comparison actually in our universities and we found the student in our survey that you prefer the use of technology in the classroom, they feel motivated, but not only that, they feel more engaged uh, with the teacher if the teacher uses the technology in the classroom versus a teacher who does not use the technology and usually rely on lecture and discussion only. How some of us can feel, yes, uh, we are using technology, but the technology is monitoring us. We, they can track us, our activities, they can track our movement, they can track our content. So how we how do we feel safe about uh, us being there online? So on one hand, some might argue that the student can claim more understanding as a result of their spatial freedom. Due to the online material access, on the other hand, this new virtual space in online learning needs to be teacher friendly, and that visual contact between the teacher and the students should still be used freely. So, and this is the challenge of online classroom. So there is an apparent and implicit anxiety that the values of the traditional teaching may somehow be eroded. So basically we are in the verge of and a new era of not actually in favor of using physical or uh, old traditional teaching. And now the current institutional pedagogy was predicted on a sharp dictatomy between traditional teaching as distinctly different current shift to the remote pedagogy. And now there's a conflict that we absolutely have. So this conflict between conventional classroom pedagogy and the new remote or live classroom setting boils down to the basic opposition between traditional classroom with their all the traditional centered approaches and more current remote pedagogy, which is more student centered. We're moving from the physical classrooms where the teacher-centered, lecture-centered pedagogy is both encouraged and enable the physical configuration to virtual space and its remote pedagogy. And now we, we can see that there's a shift towards remote pedagogy, but basically remote pedagogy could be also a term for online pedagogy. And it could be also a term for virtual pedagogy. So everything that's not there in the classroom, it could be online, it could be virtual, it could be uh, digital. So that's actually a shift as well. So commonly used definition of pedagogy refer to both the art and the science of teaching. <clears throat> However, the unique capabilities of the web can be used in combination with good <clears throat> pedagogy to create creative and creative online learning experiences for, for the students. In recent years, the academic world has been an enthusiastic rush of faculty to the World Wide Web as the newest mode of interface with the students. If we have noticed right now, there is a lot of packages, there's a lot of uh, uh, new systems being incorporated in the at higher uh, institutes to encourage teachers to, to use technology in the classroom. The, um, the study has found that the use of technology, of course, will help the student uh, motivate, be motivated in the classroom, but it's not only that. Uh, the use of technology in the classroom uh, by the teacher has facilitated their way of teaching. So actually it's not only helped the student, but also helped the teachers. If you talk about um, um, theories in terms of technology, you have to actually link that with the behavior learning theory and the cognitive psychology in comparison with what's happening right now in the digital age. So behavior learning theory and cognitive psychology have influenced most modern teaching practices. Behavior learning theory developed largely from Skinner's view 
that learning is measured as a change in individual behavior. And that is really something that we need to look at and puzzle over with. So what does it mean about the change in individual behavior? Well, we, when we have the digital age right now, our uh, bust COVID-19, <clears throat> we could notice that a lot of things happening there are uh, in the behavior of the students will have shifted their use of technology. Initially, it was a very rocky road with the student and the teacher, but now they, be com be they became confident, uh, competent, at the, as well to use technology by the teacher or by the student. So this is actually a change of behavior. Can we go back to the traditional one? Not really, I don't think so. Or it could be a combination between the two. So behavior learning theory focuses on modifying the learner's behavior and producing instructions that involves representative <laughs> Um, there's, there's something also we need to ask ourselves. Is there a difference between cognitive and versus uh, psychology in terms of our student and <clears throat> the classroom? Well, there is actually a link because cognitive psychology focuses on the learner's mental state rather than behavior. So the mental state of the, uh, of the student will change by using technology. So it's not only the behavior of the student, but actually the cognitive, what's happening, what's happening in their mind, the cognitive skills they, they acquire through the internet to the use of technology actually has changed as well. So cognitive psychology is in comparison with behavior psychology is almost the same thing. But actually, it's a level up than, uh, than we can see in terms of cognitive skills by the students. So Page posted that individuals have internal cognitive structures or ways in which they understand the world. So usually we understand the world in the traditional way, in the old method. But nowadays we have the new method. So basically our cognitive skills have changed. The structure in our brains has changed according to our behavior. The teaching method should therefore provide activities that challenge and engage students in order to cause assimilations and accommodation that to take place. Learning occurs when learners actively relate material to their existing cognitive structure and recognize their understanding of the concepts. Such active engagement with the material will lead to the transfer of the concept to new solutions, where uh, uh, root memorization will not be the case. So in terms of digital uh, era and, and the use of digital technology in the classroom, that behavior will initially will move into the cognitive structure and how this will affect the, uh, the learning process. Um, but stopping there is not enough. So we need to have activity that also challenge, motivate and, and, and trigger their, uh, their brains and cognitive skills in the brain so that it will be assimilated between the technology used in the classroom and the content of the, of the topic they are learning at the same time. This is something, actually, a project I have done uh, myself uh, with my own student. So I call this one uh, Insta Poets. So what we have basically done, I was teaching poetry to the classrooms and uh, we, we did like free prose or free poetry style. And I asked my students to, to go to Instagram because they are actually, they love Instagram, they love the posting pictures. But at that time, I wanted them to, to write something from their own feelings uh, and connect it with the picture that could relate to the feeling they have. And it's absolutely, uh, I, I was absolutely amazed of the, uh, the result of this uh, project. As you can see, the first picture of the guy almost lying there in the bed. Uh, this picture uh, and, and, and the poem is about the loss of someone's father. So the student lost his father and he was talking about his loss in that picture. Uh, it was absolutely beautiful. And the second one is about a student who doesn't know uh, what his future entails. So he's kind of lost in terms of goals in, the, in life. He wrote about his like uh, dreams and his like uh, uh, feeling of being lost in, in those dreams. The third one actually is kind of funny one because it was this Japanese restaurant. It was like a, a sushi place, and I was like, I asked my student, I, I can I can understand the poem, but I don't see the link between the poem uh, and that image. And basically, he said that his wife she likes sushi, uh, 
So, so that's why he wrote about a love, likely poem uh, about his wife, and that actually picture connected with her love to sushi. So this is actually how we have tried to integrate technology in the classroom and social media. Social media is absolutely technology at the same time. So the social media is part of the technology, but at the same time, uh, the content is there in terms of poem. Uh, the, the digital era is there in terms of like how they have used social media uh, to, to project their feelings and how they have used the images at the same time in the social media pl platform. So this is actually, we can see that there is an, a rise of new pedagogy. So several researchers have discussed the pedagogical aspect uh, of web use of higher education. Uh, how are we doing with time? Do we still have time? Because I only have like five slides. So how, how much minutes do I have yeah. right now? One minute, Professor. <laughs> okay. Okay, great, great. So the, I'm, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Okay. So there is a drive of new pedagogy. So I will talk this like right now about examples. So to talk about creativity and remote pedagogy. So uh, also we use a software called Pixstones. Uh, in that Pixstones, like at the student create conversation and narrative. Uh, by using actual images and that was uh, absolutely creative because they have managed to have a narrative of a story using English as a conversation and that's something we use in uh, as a as a new technology as well uh, in the classroom but th this is something they've done in the classroom by giving them feedback and also uh, outside the classroom by giving them time to, to make their own stories. All right, so what we have found, so students uh, are able to see a practical application of the knowledge. They are more motivated in the, and uh, more easily merge the new information with the previous uh, sim Simulations can also provide valuable experiences in applying new knowledge, either to contribute to the learning process or as assessment of the learner's understanding. The so successful learning uh, of even more complex knowledge requires students to engage in the production of the new knowledge. So we can't just give them knowledge and ask them to memorize, but actually give them knowledge and ask them to engage in the production of the knowledge. So self-evaluations, reflection, and application of that knowledge is necessary. In Magnus hypermedia design model, the design of instructions provides questions and guidance to foster evaluation and reflection by the learners. So to take Active learning should engage students in the learning process to create their own understanding of the subject matter. Learners ideally can take, choose their own, perhaps guide, guided path through the new information based on their own ability levels and objectives. Then they can apply the information of the new institutions. The hypertext environment it's in the digital era was created to allow users to select their own path through information and the best example of web-based instructions facilitate this as part of an active learning process. So yeah, thank you so much. And that's it. That time is done. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor. You have done the presentation in the, uh, exactly 20 minutes. <laughs> um, <Okay>. uh, <laughs> um, before I continue to the next speakers, maybe I can uh, provide like a five minutes for you guys, uh, for the participant who wants to ask maybe one of two or two questions for Professor Tariq. Do you have? Um, I would like to read one, uh, some messages from our participant. Oh, we have uh, Dr. Aditya Narayan from India. And then Dr. Nuraini, impressive presentation, Professor Tariq. Uh, so it is a com compliment, yeah, from uh, Dr. Nuraini. Thank you. Um, I am inviting you to ask maybe some question. <clears throat> Do you have? Uh, well, um, I want to ask. Oh. <laughs> oh, you want to ask, Doctor Mut? Oh, okay. No, 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 no. Ask. Yes, I want to sharing about the Piston comic maker example. Okay. I mean that. Uh, what is the the learning outcome from this uh, comic that uh, are your students creating the comic, the story, and then they will be uh, sharing by uh, speaking or something like that. Uh, I mean, they hear the instructional design, what should we do? Because I'm also um, giving my student with comic, but 
na uh, creating a comet only in mga tun yeah the application from mga tun they are uh, reading uh, from manga and then uh, they are uh, giving their ideas uh, retelling retelling again the story from the the comic so i see that your uh, interactional design or you mentioned before this is the new pedagogy or the modern pedagogy uh, what is the core of the learning outcome from this uh, by Pixton the comic? So if we wanted to relate it to the 21st century skill, we got it, the student will be creating their new comic, the new product. They have the new product. They're making a comic. They're making the story. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> just make sure that. <laughs> well, yes, yes. Well, actually, they're absolutely right. They're making their own comic, but the, the idea uh, we have th uh, three different learning outcomes. The first one is to create authentic uh, conversation between the, uh, uh, the students themselves. So basically, we try to have like authentic conversation where something they can relate, something they can uh, they can they can not only relate, they can write, and they can see there's a connection between what they write and what they feel in real life. So they talk, they talk about smoking. Mm -hmm. So one of the students talk about smoking and how it's toxic because uh, uh, he said that his father like smokes and he wants to talk about this like conversation in English. And uh, he presented that conversation, that comic project to his father and his father was shocked. And he, he said to him, I had no idea you had smoking uh, that much. He said, I couldn't do it in Arabic. So I, when I did it in English, I felt more free because mm -hmm. I felt I'm okay to do it in English. So that's mm -hmm. actually an authentic conversation. That's a, one of the learning outcomes. The second learning outcomes are the student is to try to create a story. Mm -hmm. So it's not about only conversation. So it's a, it's a narrative of a story from the start to the, to the end. So we, try, we asked him like about the topic, start a topic, the middle and there's a climax of the topic, you know, and then after the climax is the resolution, which is the end of the of the story. So they're actually creating a story from the start to the end. That actually are uh, being creative without the help of this of the of the teachers. So this is the second one. The third one, uh, what we have done, uh, we shared everyone's project uh, among all the classmates. And uh, everyone has benefited from uh, the authentic conversation, but also have, if, uh, have felt that using comic was an easy way instead of writing essays. <laughs> it's really funny mm -hmm. yeah. because uh, it was difficult for them to write an essay, but it was easy for them to use the, the text one as a comic maker to create a story instead of writing a state. And then after that, what we have done was that this is the best learning outcome we came out of it. Uh, at the end, we asked him to write actually an essay about how they have felt about using like, you know, a Pixel as a comic maker, or what are the benefits they have again out of it. So they have, they have gained their own learning outcomes. So the learning outcomes at that software was actually best understood by the student, but not the teachers. So the mm -hmm. student themselves have actually uh, stated what have they have learned themselves without me interfering in the learning outcomes. Yeah, thank, thank you, Professor. So if I can highlight about your last presentation, yeah. just now, successful learning is uh, when the students can do application of what they know about the knowledge. So this, this yeah. extent uh, as the media for, for uh, sharing what what they know, so the application they made for for the they 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 their knowledge. Thank you, Professor yeah, yeah. Tariq. Uh, just now I see. Uh, yeah, just now I saw uh, Doctor uh, Leila Renhal raise hand. Do you want to ask maybe one more question? Short question. <laughs> Leila Renhal, do you want to ask, uh, Mrs. She she is also our keynote. Yeah, just now she, she, she raised hand. Maybe she wants yeah. to share something about Professor Tariq Elias uh, uh, presentation. But, uh, okay. I am okay. here, just I cannot unmute my staff. Good uh, morning, okay. Dubai. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you so much for these sessions and others. Sorry for coming late. I was having to meet me. It's great to see great talents and high caliber speakers. Today, Dr. Tarek made all that one in one very easy and simple for uh, this topic. And I'm really blessed to attend uh, those highlights of it. But how we can implement and protect the student 
do not be committed because you know the student. I, I um, empower the youth and I'm signing with many universities and especially those who graduated from MBA. Lately, I have 10 to train them to be entrepreneur of tomorrow and leader of tomorrow. That sometimes we cannot control them because the enthusiasm that I'm talking about, not technical part, because when you're implementing technical part, you go to the psychology part and to that intelligence, artificial intelligence, because they are very smart. How you can guide them? Are you having some specialist with you who can orient them? Because sometimes they fit up from, um, they are enthusiastic, they come, they want to do and stuff. Suddenly all that dream drops down because they want to go fast, they want to go speed and they want to implement things. And they think that um, to be uh, the first is the more important to them than to learn step by step and to absorb that knowledge and to evaluate it to mechanism, to implement your idea, which is fantastic. Where we can guide them and how we can implement that sources you are letting them create. Thank you. And second one, are you open to okay. collaboration in Dubai? Thank <laughs> okay. You. Thank you. So it is an invitation, Professor Tariq. <laughs> okay, please oh, answer you. the question. How? Well, for the second question, I've been uh, invited speaker for Tisal Arabia uh, in Dubai. I've also been invited speaker for in Abu Dhabi, New York University. Uh, for creative writing and translingual practices. Uh, I think that was like in February last time. Yes, so uh, yes, I'm open for collaboration with Dubai. I love Dubai, I love Abu Dhabi. So yeah, that's great. Well, um, well, uh, to go back to the first question was very elaborated actually questions. Uh, it's also tricky because I think it's very individual cases, case by case. So um, it's not easy to, to uh, implement and apply whatever we have learned in a certain case, uh, uh, and that could be applicable in all cases in a context. context. For that reason, actually, um, I have a certain way uh, to know who are my students. So usually I, I, I take about two weeks to understand each one of them, uh, their motives, what they wanna learn, why they are in my classroom, why they are interested in my topic and my subject, and, and then from there, actually, what I do, I try to create something that um, it's linked to the content I'm teaching, but also it's linked to the, what you want to do individually and also as a group. So um, some of my students, they like to, to work individually. Some of my students like to work in a group. So I really need to understand them. I need to understand what are the things that makes them click. Uh, this is something I spend in usually about two, two, two three weeks, I usually. Uh, in, 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 in the time of my teaching. So usually I, I spend time without them knowing that I try to understand, analyze their personality. So I understand how I could actually cope for that. And this actually, uh, the poetry class is a very difficult uh, class in, in my department because they're not interested in literature. Uh, and to find poetry is very, very difficult. So um, I asked him what they like. They said they like pictures, they like movies. I was like, okay. Uh, so what kind of a uh, platform do you use in, in social media? They say they love to use uh, uh, Instagram. So I I I I I taught them how to how to write free uh, prose and um, for a, for about a month. And I give them my own because all, I'm also a poet. And I made them feel good to criticize my own work. So I actually have shifted the power. So I made them feel that they are actually empowered by, by creating my own work and what they like, what they don't like. And then eventually what I said to them, okay, now it's, your, it's my turn to look at your work. But I, what I want you to do is to make it real, to make it authentic, to make it related to you individually. And it really worked. Because I, uh, I, I, I give them some kind of repertoire like, uh, between uh, me as instructors and them as a student. So the link between me as instructor and the student became a very nice, friendly, kind of like platform, foundation, where we are becoming one. So I'm, I'm not here just like to tell them like, uh, yes, they can fail, but actually 
uh, they can they can pass and they can be creative. And I said to them, this is the time for them to be creative mm -hmm. because after that, I don't guarantee that you will take this opportunity to be who you are, to reflect on your inner desires, to reflect your inner goals as much as you could do with my course. So I absolutely, what I did, motivate them to be themselves, to, to do the things they like. And that's really worked for, with me. Thank you. Um, okay, Professor, thank you very much. If I can uh, conclude that you make uh, like um, intensive personal communication with, with your students. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that do. is great. I love you. <laughs> I, I love thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> well, I, I Just also, because I treat I'm... them as adults. I treat yeah. them as adults. I don't treat them as a student. That yes. really makes a difference. Yes, That really makes a difference. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> And every day I, I ask him, how was, how was the weekend? When, mm -hmm. And he's like, huh? Why are you asking about the weekend? So I just <laughs> spent five minutes to ask him about the weekend. Okay. And this creates really nice, friendly atmosphere. And the yes. vibe between me and the student. When, and they ask me, how was your weekend? <laughs> and actually, I tell them about my weekend. <laughs> if it's good or it's bad, I tell them. <laughs> yeah. So this is okay. created a really nice repertoire. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Professor, Professor Tariq. Thank you, Mrs. Nalayla, for your question. Um, okay, this is the end of uh, Professor Tariq uh, session. We thank you very much, Professor Tariq, for your uh, presentation. It's very wonderful. We, we you give uh, very much insight, new insight for us. And um, we continue to the next uh, keynote speaker. Uh, she is Dr. Gul Erkol Bayram. She's already here right now. Uh, beautiful. How are you, Mrs? How are you? Uh, thank, <laughs> thank, thank you so much, uh, dear doctor. Uh, I'm so happy to meet you uh, again. Yesterday yeah, again. also <laughs> I have an important meeting. Uh, today I uh, participated with a uh, different topic. Uh, mm -hmm. As my dear uh, colleagues uh, mentioned <clears throat> and uh, suggest to uh, suggest to me, uh, I would like to um, to talking about um, cultural issues in Turkey. Maybe uh, anybody uh, who show interest to our cultural festival in Turkey. Uh, if you give me permission, uh, I would like to start my presentation. Yeah. yeah, you may you may share your screen. Let me introduce you a little bit. You are from Sinop University, Turkey. And uh, Mrs. Uh, Miss uh, Dr. Erko Bayram is uh, eating most, 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 most of our uh, conferences yeah, in Indonesia. With uh, yes. the director is Mrs. Mutmaina uh, and also Dr. Andy Asrifan. Thank you very much for always be with us, Mrs. Uh, Miss uh, Dr. Gul Erkam. So uh, you can share your screen right now. Um, I can tell you that you have uh, like 20 minutes uh, for presenting and also including the question and answer there. Thank you very much and uh, the floor and screen for you. Thank you so much, dear Dr. Fadila. Um, I would like to try to obey the uh, timing. My topic is uh, managing cultural events and meetings in Turkey also. Um, we can um, define the um, cultural events. Uh, maybe it is a series of performance who compose of music, plays, films, movies, and etc. and uh, doing in a same place, or maybe um, it is a series of public events connecting a particular activity or idea. Uh, we can uh, make an example from the Greek communities as an Olympic Games, or maybe it is possible to religious events in Turkey, or maybe uh, in maybe Indonesia. It is so normal to express uh, cultural events uh, in different times and different dimensions also. Uh, we have also benefits of cultural festivals uh, when we talk about um, for uh, economically and socially and politically, it is so normal. And uh, any festivals um, 
of visitors maybe spend money and it boosts local economy both on and off the festival sites. On the uh, spending includes ad uh, admission fees, parking fees, food and beverage and souvenir sales and more. Uh, festivals also provide free marketing and advertising for, for local business as uh, visitors talk about their fun experiences and also uh, we can have uh, some economically we have some economically uh, important solutions also uh, and maybe someone uh, talks about social media sorry i would like to um i would like to yes up my whatsapp so sorry we can turn the yes um and also festivals uh, have some uh, effects on uh, fostering community pride. Uh, hometown pride is a critical factor in the development and also improvement of any community. Residents with a community pride are more likely to speak positively about their town to others. And uh, maybe it can be a volunteer to with organizing activity that support the common good. And festivals promote community pride by celebrating things that may enhance. And uh, evoke good feelings. Uh, those things can be as a big as ethnic heritage or small as piece of pastry. Um, and maybe we can teach new things from cultural events. Uh, whatever a festival's theme, it is no issues. It is bound to be uh, instructional or visitors are bound to learn from it. Also, it has a, a, a little uh, responsibility effects on tourism and we can have a close relationship with uh, cultural tourism and also uh, responsible tourism. Uh, of course, education, including greater awareness and mean knowledge is another social benefits of festivals, but uh, this isn't learning from a book or in a classroom. Uh, we can have a big experience uh, from cultural festivals, so it is so memorable in our minds uh, from time to time, and maybe this can be uh, leads to uh, next visitation or maybe we have a word of mouth uh, marketing uh, to uh, teaching new, new things. And uh, another effect is, is strengthening relationship. Uh, firstly, a third social benefit of festivals is stronger relationship between a community. Most of the relationship building occurs in festival planning and praise. And this is where the bonds among public and private organizations, uh, government, uh, neighborhood groups, and port, and where um, connections among elected officials, staff volunteers, and interested residents are made. Um, and it's, it has a, a kind of value of training also. Um, firstly, hosting a festival is not without risk or cost. It mainly has uh, some opportunities and good things. Uh, in the end, festival management means minimizing damage and maximizing opportunity. And festival events uh, management program also uh, covers strategic planning um and uh, site management budgeting and financial planning and marketing and sponsorship and human resources management volunteer recruitment and uh event valuation also uh cultural events compose of many dimensions as you see on the screen and cultural products uh, are considered one of the core drivers destination competitiveness um for example um 
we have we have some effects on accelerating trends. Uh, we have destructive events. We have uh, exchange rates. Uh, maybe after uh, cultural events, our uh, progress on digi uh, digitalization and mobile devices uh, can be developed. Uh, we have aging population. Um, we maybe can reduce terrorism. Uh, we maybe we can reduce by uh, cultural events to natural disaster. Uh, we have economic downturn and regional demand shifts. But also, I would like to add that um, cultural events can uh, threaten to our community with some negative effects. Um, I hope and I assume that uh, terrorism can reduce after cultural events because cultural events, events is one of the less damageable parts in the tourism industry. But on behalf of this, um, after the generation has been progressed, uh, this situation can be changed uh, if we don't have some um, precautions and if we don't have a good planning and policy also. Cultural products and events play an important part in destination competitiveness because uh, of their role as image makers and tourist attractions. Um, I can say that um, maybe in religious events or maybe in uh, national events, it's so important around the world right, of a country. Uh, maybe, for example, um, one of the most important events in Mexico um, it has been known as a touristic um, as a touristic attraction. So uh, most of tourists can see to uh, these national uh, festivals and can maybe uh, once they, they want to make uh, good experiences from that. Um, impact of cultural events has some dimensions, important dimensions, and cultural events can be a relevant variable in attracting meetings in some uh, cases and can be, can be the primary reason for holding a congress or meeting. And cultural variables may be strategic lever for a destination to develop its meetings and segments. And cultural events and products can serve to increase the number of meetings by attracting congress or conferences linked to cultural events and hosted by a city. And cultural events enhance a city attractiveness as a meetings destination generally and therefore meetings activity. Um, the increasing meetings activity compares with um, proceeding and su succeeding years, the associate rise in the number of meetings, participants and overnights. And this increase in overnights uh, is great in, greater than the increase in terms of participants. Uh, the overnight term means um, staying in a place for one reason as a tourist in a hotel or some accommodation places. And this has a, a direct impact firstly on accommodation places, uh, hotels, and uh, after maybe indirect effects to other establishments, for example, uh, in food and beverage management, in maybe recreational management, in travel agency. I am also a professional tour guide. And if uh, anybody uh, wants to learn more places after uh, visiting for, um, for cultural events, uh, I can help too as a tour guide. Um, and I, I mean that, uh, I would like to express that cultural events has a big market and has a, a different effect to different shares on the tourism industry. And cultural organizations also generate meeting activity in their own locations. Uh, local events hosted by cultural organizations are usually association meetings uh, as they generally consist of academic session at which uh, experts discuss a spe specific cultural issue. Um, 
An indirect uh, impact as a uh, historic and cultural attraction are assessed for the meetings industry because they are part of a desirable location and provide an opportunity for visitors to combine business and pleasures. For example, Istanbul uh, in Turkey, uh, one of the most attractive places, positioned itself as a Congress destination a few years ago and is still in the start of phase. And the city does not yet have a convention center. Also, Istanbul has many attraction places. Maybe you know Sultan Ahmed Mosque, Hagia Sophia, uh, Hagia Sophia, sorry. And maybe um, the other many parts of we can possible to see. Okay. The strategy adopted by Istanbul is to attract corporate meetings, offering companies the to hold their events in heritage locations or to have their bankers in historic buildings. We have many important events and festivals in Turkey to attract different parts of the um, people around the world. Um, because Turkey is a, heaven, ha, is a heaven of cultural events and Turkey hosts a spectacular array of music and cultural festivals, high adrenaline, sports and exciting family entertainment. Turkey is a major global cultural hub and is the most visited country. Whether it is winter or summer, it is not important. Turkey has many features, fantastic events around, uh, around all year. Um, festivals can dimensions by the some categories, lifestyle events in Turkey, sports events, national events, religious events, cultural and art festivals, and traditional Turkish festivals in Turkey. Firstly, music festivals, classical music, electronic music, Eurovision song contact, jazz festivals, and rock festivals made in Turkey, in different parts of uh, Turkey. And sports events. All people on the uh, presentation is the Turkish people who win, uh, who won many important categories in many important cate cate categories around the world. So I am so proud of them every time uh, when I mention to my country because this hero uh, and Turkey and these people uh, love Turkey so much. Uh, and Turkey's love for sports has taken them for on the global scale and they continue to impress rest of the world. And I think you know this hero. Uh, national festival in Turkey, um, we have uh, different national festivals, maybe Republic Day on October 2019, uh, Victory Day on August uh, 30, and commemoration of Atatürk, and this is the leader of our country, and the founder of our country, uh, Atatürk Guild, and the National Sovereignty and Children's Day on April 23. The religious festival is so important because uh, it is maybe completely all of people in the Turkey are Muslim. So maybe the Ave of Power, Ramadan, and Sugar Holiday, and Festival of Sacrifice, is one of the most important in our country. When you visit to uh, maybe in Ramadan um, in Turkey, you can see many different attraction attraction places and many different parts of uh, colorful places. So I would like to request to you, you should visit in Ramadan, Turkey. Uh, and cultural and art festivals in Turkey, Ephesus festivals, international Izmir and Aspendos Opera and Ballet Festival, Antalya, Saint Sculpture, Pasalis, and Festival of Saint Nicholas, Golden Orange Film Festival, International Istanbul Biennale. And Turkish uh, traditional festivals, and also these festivals attract uh, many tourists. Uh, firstly, Tulip Festival in Istanbul, maybe you know the tulip term from the Ottoman Empire, uh, because the tulip is so popular, uh, has been so popular during the Ottoman time. And the Air Balloon Festival in Cappadocia, um, uh, it is so um, famous in 
um, for example, around the Japan tourists. Um, and it is so um, pleasurable when you uh, visit the Cappadocia around the summer. Uh, ap from April to uh, September, um, and one of the other activities to air balloon festival and oil, oil wrestling festival. It is a traditional festival from Ottoman Empire, uh, and it means some encourage and it means uh, support to our friends, um, and it means many more. I can say, and the camel wrestling festival is also other traditional festival come from Ottoman Empire. And Ahur Kapı Hidrales festival is so another uh, precious festival. And it means to entrance uh, spring to our country and, and entrance to um, spring to our world. And Hidrales means uh, too much different uh, dimensions, I think. Mevlana Berlin Dorishes Festival conducted in Konya, one of the most attractive places in Turkey also, uh, because Mevlana is the most important, one of the most important um, holy person in our country. Messer Pace Festival come from Ottoman Empire, another important uh, religious festival, and Nervous Spring Festival. And uh, finally, I would like to uh, finish my um, speech about the managing cultural festivals uh, in destinations. Step first, we should plan the project. Uh, it is obvious that organizing an event demands a stronger approach and a team of professionals. By following teams between uh, thinking, planning, executing, there are a lot of things to care for. And the step three, pay attention. Whatever the plan you think or ready to assemble, it must involve the logistic, content, and promotions. And to create any particular event, each member of the team must be responsible enough to produce the tax given. And the step three, mark the budget. Uh, when done with a dis dis distribution, you need to look for the budget according to the task and listed. And the secondly, listing and planning are great, but sometimes it often takes a trouble. And step uh, three, survey the location, always check the location. And the step four, divide responsibilities. We divide responsibilities when doing a festival. And the fa finally five, step five, introduce the events. Um, yes. Turkey is a country uh, which has a very popular and has a rich, uh, colorful, attractional places uh, because we have a very uh, famous traditional events. We have a uh, very rooted culture and it is reflected by its festivals. Um, the age-old rituals have some or maybe other significance that not only cheer up the travelers, but also evoke some knowledge about the country and its traditions. If you haven't been to Turkey yet, uh, then it is, it is recommended to visit soon and check out the traditional festivals of Turkey as a guide, professional guide in Turkey for 12 years. I would like to help to um, directing and making um, making some journey uh, to you uh, in order to keep the rich Anatolian culture in Turkey alive and thriving in every province, this ring, and even in some village. There are um, various traditional events and gatherings. At the same time, some national and international festivals are held in order to support this purpose. We are generating new festivals also in Turkey. Uh, we have traditional events. Uh, it, is, uh, it is very important, but also we are generating and we are composing new events to attract uh, more uh, visitors. Uh, festivals which represent traditional Turkish culture not only aim to increase the spirit of the unity in society, but also to present the culture 
cultural wealth of the places where these ceremonies are held. Uh, the common feature of festivals and celebrations uh, is they both enhance cooperative efforts in society and create a unity of ideas or actions. I would like to finish my presentation uh, much appreciative to my uh, friends and my dear brothers, uh, dear Abdulaziz, and also uh, my another uh, college is Mania and dear uh, brother is and Asrifan. Uh, thank you so much again. That's okay. all. <clears throat> well, so thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Nur Fadila is having another meeting, so uh, I have to handle this, but again, uh, it is really amazing, our beloved sister, Dr. Gul Erkal Bayram, talking about how beautiful uh, Turkey is. Uh, so uh, you have been uh, sharing us a lot of things to do. And according to uh, Prof. Tarek Elias, Turkey is such an amazing country full of wonderful yes, things and activities to offer. So don't forget to visit Turkey. And my dream is uh, visiting Cappadocia. Yes, my dream. I am waiting for you. All, all uh, of my uh, colleagues waiting to Turkey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, thank you very much, uh, dear sister, because we have got another uh, uh, keynote speakers to present Foster, and we are having the time. So again, thank you very much. But again, Foster. I'm uh, anxious to know the meaning of your name because I just know uh, Bayrami Festival Sacrifice, right? What is the, the meaning of Bayram? Bayram. Bayram. Yeah, Bayram. Uh, I can my see. Surname... Yeah. <laughs> yes. Bayram, Bayram, what is uh, Bayram means? Bayram is Eid, right? Like Eid. In oh, Eid. 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 Okay. Um, <laughs> I said to her that she done a very good presentation and she presented. Yes, yes. Everyone, uh, everyone should say that uh, she's done a great presentation. Thank well, thank you very much, thank dear uh, sister. We move to the next uh, keynote speaker. Uh, uh, so my beloved, our beloved uh, brother, Dr. Muhammad Muhyuddin from Bangladesh. He's the founder of uh, Philanthropical. Um, hello, 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 doctor. Mohammed Mohyuddin. Hello, assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Aid Mubarak, uh, although we have gone several days ago. Aid Mubarak, yeah. thank you. Very okay. Much. Yep, uh, beloved brothers, so you have got time to present your uh, topic uh, related to uh, our uh, mega lecture talk for nowadays. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr our dear brother Abdul Wafi and uh, honorable chair and distinguished speakers, my dear brothers and sisters. First of all, I would like to thank you very much for inviting me in this auspicious event. And I'm privileged to share my thoughts and my understandings. Uh, of religion, especially our religion, Islam, and the main concept of Islam towards this modern world and modern society and how to adapt with this uh, society, with the globalization and with the technology and sciences. So I'm, uh, I'm sorry, I apologize that I did not make any uh, slides or PowerPoint, but I do have my speech uh, and I would like to share my speech and my thought. Uh, I believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase in our knowledge. Rabbi zidni ilman nafi'a, Rabbi shahli sadri wa yassili amri, wa hlul uqadatan min lisani, yafqahu qawli. So uh, <clears throat> within this short uh, time, I we do have ideas about Islam and uh, the revelation of Quran and our messenger, last messenger, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
but this religion is a universal religion. This is also we all know, and but within this framework of uh, universal religion, which has been chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Allah said, in Nadina, in the Allah Islam. The only chosen religion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Islam. Of course, we know there are many other religions, previous uh, religions, faiths, and beliefs uh, already. Uh, uh, I mean, before our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, before revelation of Quran. But the main concept was, is the same to you know, establish the justice within the society, to establish the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the world. So I am not focusing on that part, but I'm going to focus on the social uh, uh, perspective uh, from the uh, practices of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and whatever has been said uh, in the Quran. So main concept of our religion, Islam and Quran, as Allah said, there is uh, very importance and um, in our religion is humanity. Important point, one is humanity and coexistence. As you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Ya ayyuhan nasu inna khalaqanakum min dhakarin wa untha wa ja'allakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila lita'arafu inna akramakum indallahi atqaqum. I have created you uh, from a, a man and a woman and I, I have made you into tribes, groups, races, so that you may know each other and there is a beauty to know each other. So in this verse, there is one a strong message for all is the religion of humanity, religion of human beings. So we, we are human. Uh, then we can go for another uh, part of our life that is our religion, either we are Muslim or we are in, uh, belong to in another belong to another religion of faith, but the most important thing is uh, humanity, and we are human beings. And if you look at the uh, the the verse Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said in the Quran about our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Prophet Muhammad has been sent to us. Uh, not to only Muslims, to all humankinds, human beings, to all creations in this world. Allah said, وَمَا أَرْسَلَّنْكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ I have sent you as rahma, mercy for all, all the universes, all the universe, not only uh, Muslim, not only to uh, human beings, to all creations, لِلْعَالَمِينَ in another verse, Allah said, uh, So Prophet Muhammad was sent to all this universe in, in this world. So based on these verses, what we understood that the Islam came for all human beings, for all the societies from Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam time of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam till Qiyamah. So this is the main universal message of Islam, universal message from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to us. So if we deeply think about this, these verses and the message of Allah, why uh, did Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala uh, send our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to all humankind, all human beings. And why this religion is for all. Till Qiyamah, there will not be any other religion, uh, I mean, chosen religion by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So uh, we, we found uh, another very strong message is integration and coexistence. 
So integration and coexistence, if we establish coexistence, if we ensure coexistence, we, we can establish peace, we can establish harmony, we can establish salama, walafia in our societies. So if you look at our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's age or time in Medina, when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam traveled to Medina, he integrated all people from all faiths, all faiths, all religions, Christians, Jewish, Islam, and other faiths, and people from other races. Even, you know, white people, black people, you know, all people, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam integrated in this Medina state. So this is a big and great message for us in this time of modern time and uh, science and technology. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when established this Medina state and he made this Medina as a bright city, uh, you know, he removed all types of darkness, jahiliya, injustice, and all types of, you know, uh, illegal things, immoral things, immoral activities. Then he made this Medina as a bright city. And he has proved, he proved that only the peace and harmony could be established you know, by ensuring coexistence and integration. So see how did Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam allow people from or followers from other faiths and religions to worship in, in, the, in Masjid al-Nabawi? In one part of the Masjid al-Nabawi, he allowed uh, people from other faiths to worship there. So this is how he was tolerant. So toleration is, is a must. So if we look at the strategy and the integrative process of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how he ensured, how did he establish a Medina state, bright state, with you know, uh, people from different races, from various faiths and religions and backgrounds. So this is what uh, Islam encourages us. Islam doesn't you know, support any kind of terrorism, any kind of you know, extremism, any kind of you know, injustice or illegal, activities. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, you know, um, proved that he was only the man severe of humanity. As all, we all know that, you know, there is a uh, English writer, you know, Michael Hart, he has, you know, placed our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the position of number one in 100 you know, uh, significant historians in his book, he placed our Prophet Islam in the number one. So he also, uh, you know, stated why he has chosen Prophet Muhammad to put uh, in the first place. He said Prophet Muhammad was only the man who, who proved, you know, the humanity, who proved the integration and who has strongly proved the democracy in his time. In another, you know, English writer, uh, he also uh, uh, stated that Prophet Muhammad was the savior of humanity because in Jahiliya there was injustice, there was, uh, you know, no morality, there was no any kind of, you know, cooperation coexistence. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, uh, you know, return all this kind of uh, justice and cooperation and collaboration and integration. 
So this is one of the example that Islam is a religion of peace and harmony, integration and collaboration. So in this world, if we look at this world, you know, the world of science and technology. If uh, we say that uh, Quran is not a book of science, it's only a book of religion. That is also a uh, misunderstanding. That's not true because Quran, the Holy Quran is a source of all types of knowledge and science, a source. I'm not saying that all uh, explanation and details are mentioned in the Quran, no. Sources, there are indications in the Quran. There are you know, references in the Quran. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Sanurihim ayatina fil afaq wa fi anfusihim hatta yatabayyana annahul haq. Hatta yatabayyana dahum annahul haq. He said, you know, I am going to show you the signs, my signs, you know, day by day, after days, years, and you know, decades. You know, my signs were in the sciences, in technologies, in these worlds, in the skies, astronomies, in, on earths, you know, uh, under the seas, under the waters, I mean, everywhere. So if you look at this, you know, Quranic, uh, Quran as a source of knowledge and sciences and technology, there are many examples, many, uh, you can say that, uh, Muslim scholars, scientists, contributions to science and technology. So I'm not going to explain everything, but I'm going to just give you some examples. Just for example, in, in mathematics, in mathematics, you know, in-, in uh, Dear brother, you have got two more minutes. Is it okay? Oh, is it okay? Oh, okay, no problem. How, how yeah. many minutes still for me? Two minutes, is it okay? Okay, okay, sure, no problem. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So I, I'm not going to, uh, you know, discuss about this uh, Muslim scholars' uh, contribution to science and technology in details, but I'm going to indicate you like in mathematics, in medicine, in uh, philosophy, in many other uh, fields, uh, Muslim contributed a lot for the years, but we, lost this power in education, in sciences and in technology. Because we, we don't focus on research, we don't focus on invention, we don't focus on properly application of our knowledge and sources. So at the end of my speech, I'm going to say that Islam and other religions, the main concept of all religions is coexistence and integration, as I stated earlier. So how to integrate uh, within this uh, age of differences and you know, different societies, different religious and also races and cultures and traditions. Example, traditions and cultures in Indonesia are different than uh, ours as in our country or maybe in uh, Arab countries, in other countries, in Turkish, uh, Turkey, in other countries. And so all these differences and uh, different traditions, cultures we do have, different faiths we do have. So we need to remember within this uh, modern world, you know, there are some countries are uh, developed, some countries are underdeveloped, some countries are developing countries. So what we need to focus, we need to remember that the first religious concept is humanity. And we need to ensure this humanity concept in our mindset. We need to put in our mindset. Then we need to think that the main message of Islam and other religion is peace and harmony with coexistence. So how to uh, ensure coexistence? First of all, we need to respect each other. I'm from Islam. There are some other people from other religions. 
we need to respect them. We need to respect their practices, their tradition, their faiths. Then number two point, number two is we need to tolerate. So toleration is the number two. In all religions, no religion, you know, you will not, never find any religion doesn't give importance to toleration. Toleration is someone is practicing his practice, religious practices beside my house. So I need to tolerate. So I, it doesn't mean that I need to accept his practices. So there is differences between toleration and acceptance. So we need to tolerate other people's practices and views and uh, ideas, recommendations, suggestions. So we need to tolerate. Number three is we need to remember that any uh, views or opinions raised by others, we need to respect their views and opinions. So if we don't respect their views and opinions, so that means, you know, I am not a man of toleration. I'm not a man of integration. Then we need to exchange our ideas of, you know, coexistence. And we need to exchange our ideas of, you know, modernity, sciences, knowledges, practices, researches. So we need to have collaboration in projects. Example, I am from this university and I am going to collaborate with another university from another religion, example from China. So we need to have this kind of collaboration and cooperation. So this collaboration and cooperation will increase, you know, uh, uh, brotherhood relationship, bilateral relationship, and it will have impact on a peaceful society and also collaboration between states to states and all countries to countries. And lastly, uh, another uh, very important point is, of course, we can never tolerate injustice. There is no any religion in the world in the basic and principle. Uh, if you look at the principles of religion, no religion support injustice. Whatever injustice we have seen from whichever religion is a uh, individual case. It's not from his or her religion. So no religion, no faith in the world supports, you know, uh, injustice, supports illegal activities. So all faiths and religions encourages to establish justice. So we cannot tolerate any types of injustice. So we need to ensure that uh, regardless of, uh, you know, people from regardless of races or religions. So we need to have mentality of equal rights, providing equal rights. So this basic equal rights of human beings, we need to ensure either you are from uh, Islam or from Jewish or from uh, Hinduism, from Buddhism, wherever, wh whichever religion you are belong to, it doesn't matter. So let's have these principles within our life. And I believe that we can have a uh, very harmonious and peaceful coexistence within this age of modernity, age of knowledge, science, and technology. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, great and clear speech. And that's amazing as always, uh, dear brother uh, Mohammed Mohaiuddin uh, from Bangladesh. What I can highlight from your uh, speeches now is that uh, uh, you know that mega lecture talk here, uh, we have got seven topics that we can cover. We have L here, uh, lecture, uh, L here mean language, B education, C culture, T technology, U universality, R religion, and uh, E here is environment. And brother uh, Muhammad Mohiuddin here is talking about religion and universality. Is that right? Uh, dear brother, yeah. okay, because uh, what I highlight from you just now that Islam here is a universal, uh, I mean, universal, uh, you know, religion, because Islam and Prophet Muhammad here, uh, as rahmatan lil alamin, that's the point. Okay, and you focus on uh, talking about humanity, 
uh, that's what we call by Ukhwah uh, Basharia, uh, and we have to spread uh, peace and harmony, respect one another, and uh, you know uh, justice uh, for all. So I think this is the great point from you. Okay, that's uh, dear brother. Thank you very much for your uh, great uh, yeah, speech. Sure. Thank you very and, much. Yep, yeah, because we are having another uh, speakers. Uh, we have Dr. Rana Khan and uh, Ibu Eva Nikmatulabianti would like to lead uh, the session with uh, Ibu uh, Dr. Rana Khan. Is it okay? Okay. Uh, you have to unmute your, you should unmute your microphone. Ms. Rana Khan is already here. Um, you should unmute yeah. your ear. You should unmute your microphone, please. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, you should unmute your microphone, ma'am ma Eva. Hello. Uh, here. Okay. Okay, that's okay, no problem. Uh, is it okay now? Ms. Uh, Rana Khan, it's okay. You may present your uh, presentation. From uh, Kalau Queen, Kalau Queen uh, University. Am I okay, right? Can I can I share? Yes, 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 yes. It's okay. Um, yes, that's it. Yes, you're right. So can I share my screen? Yes, yes. Sure, sure. Can you can you can you do it? No. Uh, we should make you as a co-host. Wait, hang on a second. Yes, yes, I can do it. Thank you so much. Yeah, just a minute. Can you uh, see my screen now? Is it in process, uh, ma'am? Can uh -huh. you see my screen? It's still in process. Uh, okay. Start it, sure. uh, screen sharing. Okay. Yeah, optimizing language learning and digitalizing of education through one note. Wow, amazing. So, uh, first of all, I would like to thank the conference organizers, my fellow the uh, Doctor, great friend. She's a colleague uh, with me, and uh, so I would. I really feel honored that I have been given an opportunity to share my experiences with fellow colleagues who are. So um, I'm going to talk how station, as Doctor Tariq Elias also mentioned, the, the first lecture of today, that how uh, the current pandemic and and actually brought. Uh, great benefits also uh, in so many ways when we try to digitalize education to different strategies. Ryan Khan is out of the Zoom. Uh, okay, are you there? Can you, sorry, I'm having a bad connection. Yeah, 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 sorry about my bad connection. I'm constantly yeah. being kicked out today. I don't know for what reason, so it's, it's a really you, bad you, connection. You, you, may, you may stop so, your video and then you so, share your screen. It will be better, please, I guess. Uh, can you see it now? No. Uh, I can okay. see Let your share screen. Yes. Yes. Is that better? Can you see my can you see my screen? Okay. It's in processing. So <clears throat> so um first uh, of course uh let me give you a brief overview of my so let me give you a brief overview of my talk today. Um, first of all, we will look at the pandemic and we will also look at hybrid learning, what hybrid learning means. 
and what it means in my I will all you cannot hear anything. Ms. Rana, you may uh Okay. Okay, uh, hang on for a second. Probably Ms. Rana is uh, going to come in again. If not, we are moving to the next and then uh, we can give uh, time Ms. Rana after then. Oh, Ms. Rana is already here. <clears throat> Yes, Ms. Anahan. Hey. I'm so sorry about this, but I don't know what's wrong with my connection today. So I'm so sorry about this inconvenience to all of you. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. So better you, you, oh, okay. you close your video and then you can uh, start your share screen, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Am okay. I, uh, yeah, I thought no, it's great now. Video. It's great now. Um, okay, so yeah. Okay, so let's move on to the presentation before it gets cut off. So <clears throat> the the current pandemic presented in us to resort to hybrid learning and so many other strategies. Uh, we as educators have to resort to synchronous and asynchronous support to provide sustainable education to students. There were disparities, though, in some of the economic conditions and technical reasons uh, in some countries, especially the developing countries, which had and struggled with time management and technical literacy. Teachers were unprepared to and needed training. So it was kind of a struggle for all of us. Blended learning, also known as hybrid learning, is an approach to education that combines online educational materials and opportunities for interaction online with traditional place-based classroom methods. This is the definition from Wikipedia. Now, hybrid learning uh, is it's, it's a wider concept. Um, uh, in today's context, it could mean combining real and online classes as we see it, especially after the current pandemic. So we have classes running partially, some students attend classes and the rest attend from home. But in my context, it meant combining face-to-face -face classes with synchronous and asynchronous learning support to make classes more engaging. And I'm just going to discuss the same with you in the coming slides, how I used hybrid learning in my classes. So let us first discuss the advantages of hybrid learning. Why do we need to implement in our classes in the current pandemic especially? and how it can provide sustainable education for our students. Hybrid learning can offer better engagement for students in classroom as it uses varied forms of interactive and virtual applications and tools that provide engaging support to our students. It is a combination of synchronous and asynchronous support so it provides a better insight to teachers to track and monitor student progress and students have to be more accountable for the learning and work. Teachers can pre-record and complete us. Students watch them at their own convenience and teach make use of different careers for students gain more confidence. Hybrid learning not only provides expression to opportunities into diverse learners.
Yes, Miss Hannah. What's wrong? Okay, that's okay. Yes, yes, I'm back. I'm so sorry. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> no problem. Everyone can understand. This, this never happened. This is the first time I'm having this kind of call. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so let's look at the different kinds of uh, synchronous, synchronous type learning that we or tools. So we use OneNote, Docs, Edo. Uh, you have Padlet, visual media like video tutorials that I later. So let's talk about OneNote because this is what I'm going to talk about very quickly today uh, within the limited time. Uh, uh, so OneNote is teacher's best tech tool for synchronous and asynchronous learning. It ensures live trackers, they save them, they automatically get saved and they're easily shareable for collaboration. Um, it, the best thing about OneNote is that it, it comes off 365 and uh, it provides collaborative learning and my system in all, all the device. you can media in one assignments and collaborate product projects think tools like the to provide support to especially in the current pandemic that we are dealing with Um, Stella Han is okay. Uh, Brother Wafi, I think yes. better you just uh, invite and give floor to another speaker. Maybe uh, Miss uh, Mrs. Rana, she can uh, deliver at the end again. Yeah, I guess I guess that, but you know, I'm. Um, uh but it's okay i think she she's, can fix she's so excited to to finish her session but that's a kind of problem um we can give her in the end of our session yes so yes. ladies and gentlemen uh sadly said that uh, we are going to move to the next uh our beloved uh mrs leila rahal how how, how should i call you mrs uh, ma'am or uh, sister Doctor, sister, excellency, it doesn't matter. Ma, okay. It, uh, it doesn't our, mean anything. Our beautiful sister, uh, Leila Rahal yes. from Dubai. It's my pleasure. Okay, How are Dubai. You? Dubai is an amazing country. Yep, yep. Dubai is the city of UAE Kenford. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Bagus. Oh, bye, bye, bye. Oh, you've been visiting to Indonesia. I am your ambassador of WPC. I'm the head of protocol and diplomacy with Indonesian NGOs. Oh, me. I see. But you haven't and met me. No, and I work in Indonesia. <laughs> 97 in uh, Rio Bintan. I've been to Surabaya, Yogyakarta. Oh, and Surabaya. Jakarta. Surabaya and is, close, is close to Yaya and Madura, my campus. Yeah. So, um, I did not prepare my speech to all our no. dignitaries and our high caliber speakers. I don't know. I don't know. 
I will just talk from my heart without presentation because I believe they highlight all the topics and yeah. those topics is meaningful to the humanity and to all the new generation because we need to build the future. So I'm here for you. Um, from where you will start, I can speak about culture, digitalization, about the education. Three of them is very sensitive. And those topics in the relationship together, either do religion, everything is one set circle who serve the humanity and serve the generation and serve the nation. So if you have a question, I can answer. If not, I will start talking. Let my sister come to the board with me. Maybe a discussion have more flavor because I don't like to just talk, talk, talk myself. It will be heavy for the people after five minutes. They cannot listen. So we want to have everybody involved and I'm here ready for you. From where do you want me to start? Okay, so first of all, to uh, make it a uh, focus, what I agree yeah. to have just now, you're talking about, uh, maybe talking about education, technology, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. culture. Culture. So first of all, share us what's going on in Dubai. How can Dubai be like uh, what we can see nowadays with uh, Burj Khalifa and <laughs> many others? Okay, so... Um... Greetings from Dubai, from UAE, the land of opportunities. With Expo, we hit the target, the best of the best, and we welcome more than 300 nations and 300 countries and more in that area. And we got a millions and millions visitors, and one of the um, platforms being based for Expo, they implement the Sustainable Development United Nations, uh, including the education and empowering of women, because it was one uh, pavilion for the women and one other pavilion for the youth and education. To implement these things and cultural for sure, to implement this idea, it is mean we are more profit and humanity. So today, everyone is taking a prototype model for leadership as UAE made, and that because of the tolerance, love, and forgiving and implement evolution and also progress and development in technology. Today, not me who can speak about UAE and the world I'm speaking about. UAE, the rich mind. And we don't forget also Indonesia has a big capacity, more than 350 million. They're making the impact. Today, Indonesia, it make a very big swap, Malaysia, Singapore. Uh, we don't forget others countries which they are making great leadership. But when we talk about, about culture, each identity have her own culture and have to take it as a mirror of herself to respect the religion and culture of others and to implement that portfolio as an image of ourselves. So um, first of all, for we start with our dress, with our dignity, with our wisdom, with our respect. And then we see the progress, how to implement technology. It doesn't stop us to be a famous or to be brilliant if we have to change our culture. Our culture is our fingerprint. Our religion is our wisdom and respect. From this door, we can balance the two of them. Today, no one is better than anyone. No one is great than anyone. Each one of us has a spot on the light where he can be a brilliant and famous. No one is not intelligent. Everybody has a degree of intelligence. If they implement in the right way to write, it is. So just press the right button. Dubai, it's becoming the fame because of the leadership, because of the strategy, because of the vision, because they implement a huge time to build up this country in a proper way and people love it because of peace which is having and because of great leader and great mentor. So always we say we, together we can make change and challenge and the door open with the tolerance and love and peace to everyone who wants to invest in Dubai, either doing education, in healthcare, in a business, even for the creative people. That's why they offer now golden visa for people who are innovative and creative and people who are a brilliant writer or artist so it doesn't matter whom you are, from where you are, which religion, which color skin, 
the door is open for you if you are going to respect the religion, culture, and country, and be productive. This is one of the guidelines which we have here. When we talk about real estate and growth, I've been to Singapore a long time and in Malaysia and Indonesia. See this country since 97, growing and growing, Hong Kong also. It's been Dubai is coming a few years ago and made that challenge more bigger in proper way with a very high perspective and luxury because the standard it was to uh, attract investors and respect them and give them the chance to invest in proper way and hold them right legally, it's present. Um, let's talk about challenge of education. When you want to build a nation, you have to think about education, 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 to change the mindset, and to motivate them and to let them to be, giving them a right kind of to be a creative, you know what to do to go ahead more than beyond the restrictions. There is restrictions, of course, in religion, in family, in respecting the rules and do not harm anyone. But when you talk about education, don't implement curriculum and be strong and strict. Let the people open the door. Don't just stop them to think positive and to think innovative. I think my lady, uh, Ms. Han, she presented a very good presentation and because of technical issues, she didn't have that um, to finish her presentation. It was very good. And uh, we, need, um, we need to educate and to empower the young generation, the youth especially, and to protect them from this revolution of digitalization. We need it, but we have to implement it in the right way in use way. Today, our youth, the young generation, they will be the future leader and they will lead our world in different way because they are very smart and they're very creative. So we have to boost them. That's why I talk with Dr. Tarek how Psychologically, we have to put in the mind how to create, how to go more far than learning, how to implement that degree they are getting because many people they get in circle of depression because of ah, I got my master, I got my MBA, I cannot find the work. Create the opportunity, don't wait for it. And don't wait someone to feed you, learn how to feed yourself. We don't ask any more charity as NGO because I have three NGO, one in Switzerland, they call Refile Fishes Family and Brenda, and another one is in Cambodia, it's called Youth Gate is for empowerment of empowerment of the youth and education. And the other one, I am Africa.net, which is a help in African people. And I'm with many NGOs, one in um, WPC, World Peace Committee 202, with Indonesia, which is one of the love of my heart. And I did a lot with them. And we've been empowering the youth in education and, and also helping people to make them uh, business in this world. Today, we don't raise fund for charity because people they use the charity. We put something called business opportunity system solution. We're looking for sustainability for the people to preserve them wisdom, to preserve them dignity. Because giving them money once or two, it doesn't find solution, but if we teach them and implement the system for them, how to earn money, how to work for it, how to deserve it. This is one of the system of education which we have to implement. And that's why I tied up with many universities here, London and others can train. And this is, we take the a new uh, graduated youth uh, student and we bring them here to Dubai to train them for how to become businessmen and how to help themselves or starting up the business, especially who have ideas. And we try to, if there is a great idea, we try to raise funds for them as a loan or as a partnership. And we remove the business to be um, action. Because now, no matter it is, the idea is beautiful. It's a main dream. We have to take action and we have to move from pleasure to profit. Each thing to be sustainable need the rotation of funds and need the money and need a business. No one can now, especially today, work with benedictions. Yes, we need a blessing from Allah, we need a blessing from everyone, but we need action. 
we need to move to monotypes. Each idea. Volunteer is good. I've been volunteer for 16 years with different NGO. I give my soul, my heart, my time. But in the end, we have to earn money. That's what we are teaching today with the people. And we launched something called SMEs Builder for a medium and a small entrepreneur, for women who's working from home. We help them to boost their business. We help them to do the branding and the marketing. This is where the technology involved. And this is why I want to talk about digitalization. Today with the pandemic, with e e-learning, digitalization today, we are in Zoom together. And this is one of the reasons why technology helped us to be extending our network relationship and learning from each other. I learned today from this platform a lot of things. I learned uh, a culture and I learned education. I learned also uh, uh, my religion, how it's beautiful to communicate with the people. God blessing, but it's being told from our colleagues. And also I learned connecting, communicating, supporting, lifting hands of others, it's karma today. And that's why this platform is here. Thank you to organizer. Thank you to everyone who's been involved. And I'm so blessed, I'm so grateful to this uh, platform. I learned also the culture, many culture like the Turkey, Malaysia, Indonesia, uh, Palestine, Arabic, local, Dubai, everywhere. There is some synergy which called Unity is humanity and diversity is inclusion. And today, one hand, we can make the challenge together. One heart, one mission, one vision, one goal is the success. We are the builder of the nation. We are the builder of the success. And we are either do the builder of this technology, which we are talking about. We have to know how to use it, when to use it, where to use it in proper. I, I say always, Two hands can clap, but cannot make a noise and not can make a voice. Together, we be strong and we can make a big, huge collaboration internationally. The door is open for all of you. Anyone want to connect, want to collaborate? Uh, Dubai giving you a red carpet. My time, my knowledge, the little one, can be with your big knowledge and with this high caliber people who are with us today and we can make difference. Our um, vision and mission to make sustainable development in the business, to collaborate for a better world, to make this world the best. Uh, we don't um, judge you with your color skin, with your nationality, with your passport, or with gender equality. You're man or female, you are most welcome. We don't judge you with your religion because God chooses for each one, if God wants to make you tomorrow what you will be, it is in second. In Allah, ala kulli shayin qadir. Our blessing, our religion, Islam, is tolerance. It's not what you see everywhere with these people who are against the Islam. Any religion doesn't say no Christian, no Judaism, no others religions say kill or steal or harm people. All the religions say peace, love, and be humanitarian. We are human beings and we remain together, one heart, one mind for the peaceful. And I don't know what to say because I did not prepare my presentation. I say I will talk from my heart and my heart spread love and waiting the door open for knowledge, sustainability, and we learn from each other. And I learn every day from all of you. If you have any question, I am here. Our culture, again, is our mirror. Our student is our future. Our education is our behavior. Um, the social media is being destructing a lot of areas that either do social media help us to be together. That's why we have to implement it in a positive way. The motivation is the key of positivity. Keep motivating others. I say to all the women, when we talk about women empowerment and gender equality and women wisdom, you are the ladies and queen of the world. God give you that privilege to be mothers. And the, the mother of our prophet is the lady, the mother of the big presidents and 
It's a lady. Ministers, the mothers, is lady. And you have to be proud to be women. I'm so proud and glad that I'm a woman and my mother is a woman. And the women's today is not only half of society, is a poor society. Without women cannot be, and without men cannot be. We are equal in Quran, uh, and God put us together to build, to build a nation, even though in other religion. And we respect every woman, we respect every man. Our culture tell us respect, respect, respect. So we respect you, we love you, and please keep educating your children in proper way. Please keep respecting your women and give them the wisdom and give them the, the, the way to lead because the mother being always a doctor, a lawyer, she being um, advisor, she being accountant in her small circle. So give her the way in other country where still the empowerment has been implemented to lead the world in proper way with respect. If your husband, your son, your brother, your father doesn't boost you, give him time to understand that you're a great lady and you're the queen and sunshine for his house. Time will come and it's a matter of mindset and change and challenge. We are all in need to be understanding each other, to help each other, to be together better. Let's build this better home and better world in proper way. No any certificate, doctorate, title, um, name, money, riches, luxury can build your personality. It's what you have as aura and charisma and Clear heart and beautiful heart inside and outside can make you bright. Now, any beauty external can make you shiny only if you have that blessing inside you. Let's press the button and shine, no matter who you are. Men or women, in the end, will remain human being. I say again, humanity is in unity and unity is diversity. Work on that, you will succeed. Always talk a currency of kindness, a currency of humanity. It's the most expensive currency. No dollar, no euro, no dirham, no ringgit. No money can buy this wisdom um, if you have it. Thank you again. And God bless you, your sister Layla. God bless you. Thank you. Okay. That is so awakening uh, speech from your beautiful heart. Uh, dear sister, and that's what you do in business gate, right? I got your point. And uh, uh, you want to business, teach your, yeah. I mean, everyone how to do business in life to earn money because money is kind of uh, important thing. And you have yeah. been 16 years for voluntarily services, right? Yeah, yes. Oh, I see. That. And uh, I have official uh, NGO, I built it in Switzerland. And mm -hmm. I have another. Uh, what is what is that about? What is that about? Is it for... fight refugees? We done it because of refugees of uh, Syria, refugees, family, and mm -hmm. if you oh. talk about environment, also we are involved. We launched one million tree in Sierra Leone, and mm -hmm. uh, I launched one hundred inspiring youth story. I launched one hundred uh, women um, entrepreneur and humanitarian. I now I am launching something called. 22 top women in leadership, oh. women entrepreneur leadership, and you are most welcome. Uh, we to win for the SMEs. I start with Sri Lanka. There are coming 50 uh, entrepreneurs because Sri Lanka is suffering now, and yeah, we have yeah. to help boost them with their business. And we welcome 50 entrepreneur lady SMEs, small and medium entrepreneur. We are doing exhibition. Uh, I am in technology and launch women in blockchain, women in crypto, and women driving the future. You can go to my LinkedIn and see that. Uh, would it's you like to share your I, LinkedIn, please? Sure. Uh, it's not by I, it's by mm, we. I cannot yeah, yeah, be yeah, yeah. I don't have great people like you who are like uh, me. Yesterday, I got the top 20 award. Oh, leadership. congratulations. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> and I want really to have a people who want to be in a business mentoring to help me. I cannot do it myself. Yeah. You have enough people. I don't like politics. I stay away from politics because politics is damaging everything. Yeah. That's why you don't see me in a politics. 
that you find me supporting anything to do with mentoring, business, empowering. Uh, we go to the, you know, when you talk about empowering, helping, we don't help people in, in big city. Big city have everything. We don't help those lawyer, doctor, judge. So they are already in power. We go to small villages where there is no electricity, a lack of education, where there is no uh, 3G, 4G, where there is no water, no food. That small villages, we go there and we empower these people and we give them the education. Those, they deserve it. Because there is still area with the mindset shift doesn't change. And where if there is this old-fashioned people, we still want the Jim Gordon go to school. And without knowledge, we cannot build a nation. Today, very everyone is smart. And we have to boost those people, the little girl and child, which still the parents let her marry the 13. There is still this area. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what to say. Sometimes when I start talking about this, I my heart is painful and I want to cry because how we can have all this blessing in those big cities and still in small villages, there is a lot of people suffering. There is a people who don't know what is clean water. We're fighting to implement that system of the water, especially in Africa. There is some areas, even though we know Africa is a rich country, it doesn't need charity, we need action and sustainability and leadership. I've been to, to Indonesia and Malaysia. I don't know, you're Indonesian, right? Yeah, we are okay. in Madura, a small okay. island. Yeah, I love your country because um, what I see is so beautiful. They have the heart in them hand. Even they don't have that much, the hospitality is big. Really, um kasih for all what mm. you do. I love Indonesia because it's yeah, really thank the you. That give me uh, brightness when I go to your 97. I I stay six months. I enjoy the culture, the food, the people. And that time, I think your president was the one who was blamed. Oh, Gusdur, uh, yes. our beloved K. Gusdur. Yes. And 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 and, and, mm-hmm. and surely uh, you should come to Madura someday. Uh, I, I would will, like to. I'm supposed to come with the uh, the president of WPC, but he passed away. And I was oh. having speech when he passed away. His wife and his daughter take end of WPC now, and we are planning something for women in Indonesia. Mm-hmm. And I am thinking also uh, we will organize something for cultural for Indonesian women and also fashion designer and men to come here. The topic it will be bridging the culture and economy between Indonesia and UAE. If you mm-hmm. want, we can organize that together. Yeah, uh, yeah, need- yeah. Yeah, we need at least, uh, but I need a nice fashion show with your traditional dress. <laughs> okay, so I would like to contact you, you again later, uh, personally so and much. with our community again. Thank, thank you very much for being thank so, you. Uh, you know, informative uh, and awakening uh, speech from your hand. Thank you. Well, Lovely. ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are moving to the next, and Ibu Santiana would like to lead uh, the session. Hello, Ibu Santiana. All right, thank you very much, Bro Wafi. Okay. okay, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon from Indonesia. Let's continue our agenda at the Mega like to talk strengthening moderation and innovation in rapid digital transformation for society era 540 helped by language unit that we have faculty for graduate programs of State Islamic Institute of Madura or EIN Madura, and also Indonesian Education Center to Care Frontier. Allow me, Fasantiana, as a moderator, to continue the session. Hey, I think uh, this now is the last session, isn't it? On the first day. So now we have three great keynote speakers here. They are Dr. Andi Asripan, MPD, from Universitas Muhammadiyah, Sindang Reng Rapang, Indonesia. And another keynote speaker is Dr. Mutmaina, MPD from Universitas al Asia Mandar, Indonesia, and the last, Dr. Siswanto, MPDI, from EIN Madura, which is um, the host of the event, yeah? Okay, Dr. Andi Asripan, are you here already? Wait a minute, I will check first. You, you, you may come to Dr. Monmaina. Uh, okay. Bang Andi is uh, having a uh, presentation. 
All right, because um, Dr. Andi Asrifan is uh, not yet joined our Zoom meeting, so I will continue to the Dr. Mutmaina MPD. How are you, Doctor? Are you ah, good? Condition? <laughs> I know you that you again. are really hectic and agenda, and then you today will deliver some topic related to the um, strengthening moderation and innovation in rapid digital. Maybe you can tell by yourself uh, because I didn't have your CV and all my own. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's talk about you. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. So, um, I have sent on the chat box Dr. Lima uh, YouTube or presentation. Uh, okay. uh, maybe if we are uh, still waiting the next Dr. Randy, uh, I will call him so you can play the YouTube after my uh, presentation. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Dr. Lima. Ah, Dr. Lima. <laughs> Oh yeah, sister. <laughs> hi sister. Good morning. Ah. Ah. Hi, 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 Doctor Rima. Do you wanna to uh, present right now your uh, presentation or? Hi, I'm on a report. I come back to Syria. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Okay, thank I have you. the record uh, my, my subject. Oh, okay. All right. So if uh, thank you. Thank it's the uh, I still have time. We will play uh, your recording, uh, doctor. And then now, uh, please, doctor Maina, your time is only ten minutes for presentation, and we'll follow by the question and answer session. It's about five minutes. The time is yours. Okay, thank you uh, so much, my uh, beautiful moderator. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Happy good day to all of everyone uh, that attending in this uh, wonderful uh, event or uh, in the Zoom or uh, we are right now live uh, in YouTube on Facebook. So I hope you are uh, enjoy all of the keynote speaker uh, presentation. Uh, I'm also uh, really enjoy and uh, I'm lucky to be here also uh, with all of you. So thank you so much to the rector of EIEN Madura and then our uh, president, Abdul Gapur, uh, Mr. Abdul Wabi, uh, my, uh, brother, uh, my sister, my beautiful sister moderator, Dr. Santiana from Universitas uh, Siliwang. I will share my screen. I know my time uh, is limited. Um, just want to share uh, to you also about my experience, uh, what we are doing uh, here in my, in my university in, uh, during the COVID-19 uh, when everything going to uh, online uh, until, until right now, not only uh, in COVID-19. So allow me to introduce uh, my little bit, my profile. My name is uh, Dr. Nutmaina. You can call me Nina. I am lecturer in the Faculty of Teacher Training and Education at my university, Universitas al Azhar Manda. This is some of my national and international organization and also my research ID. So feel free to cite and yeah, read my uh, article over there. Okay, uh, we wanted to discuss some uh, key point about the condition uh, in the digital era today. Uh, this is about the accelerating digital transformation on educational sector. And then uh, by, based on my observation, my opinion and my interpretation, I divided into the five highlight issue. The first one about injected artificial intelligence in education. The second one about education transformation in few smart digital classroom management, cyber gogi and digital vaccine. The first one is about uh, artificial intelligence. Yeah, uh, we know that uh, right now we are familiar with these uh, tools, this software, and then we get so many uh, benefits uh, from uh, this artificial uh, intelligence. So also this is the software that uh, we share it to our students 
to improve uh, their skill, like um, in our subject for English subject, this is a very uh, benefit for uh, our student here. And also um, based on some of the uh, studies that uh, support research, that in Asia, actually we are uh, totally accelerating by using the smartphone uh, in the classroom. The second one, about, second one about education transformation, we are familiar with the remote teaching for our classroom, distance education. And also we are, uh, must be adapt with the new habit, new culture, information, communication, technology culture. And then uh, based on this condition, we are redesigned our curriculum. This is related to our Ministry of Education launching the policy about Merdeka Belajar curriculum Merdeka uh, belajar or independent learning, independent campus, but uh, actually totally uh, the implementation about this uh, Merdeka Belajar or this curriculum still, um, yeah, we are still uh, on the process. Uh, yeah, we are right now injected technology, both of the condition or the environment, blended or hybrid learning environment. Yeah, we manage uh, everything uh, by uh, technology, but uh, the condition like in my pledge right now, even we are uh, having two years during the COVID-19, but some of the schools still not allow the student to use the smartphone in the classroom. <laughs> I think this is the contradiction uh, phenomenon because uh, yeah, why, why, why they are not allow the student to use the smartphone anymore in the classroom? <laughs> yeah, I think this is, I don't know how to say about that, but I think uh, we, we, we cannot um, uh, mention this is um, uh, wrong or right, but related to the research that we know that um, so many educators, they are below a skill, uh, how to use, how to teach, and how to training their student uh, by using this technology in the classroom. Uh, so totally this is about, we come back again with the first keynote speaker, uh, our professor, Professor uh, Tarek Elias, about the pedagogy itself. So the next about infused more digital classroom management, yeah, of course, uh, our country, Indonesia, we are going to the process um, to manage our classroom into the smart digital classroom. We are prepared everything about the technology and the content itself. But remember, uh, to manage the smart digital classroom management, uh, I'm just giving you recommendation uh, to implementation, triple quantum, namely quantum learning, quantum teaching, and then quantum technology. We do really hope by triple quantum, all of the educators, they, they will be delivered the material based on the student-centered learning approach. Yeah, of course, we, we hope so. So mobilize the learning, yeah, right now, uh, Indonesia condition, we understand, or we are still uh, in this uh, process. So many, so many, so many, uh, our Ministry of Education and Culture launching the program, the project, uh, to giving the training uh, for our uh, educator. Accelerated learning, and then we are facilitate student, parent, and students and our staff to have their access to the technology uh, itself. Uh, but yeah, we have so many homework about that uh, because creating uh, the content, the simple uh, material to our student, uh, yeah, we are still going to be adapt. Yeah, you know, Indonesian curriculum is uh, very different with another country curriculum. Uh, we hope by this independent learning and independent campus curriculum, uh, so the next future of our, of our education will be more better. Cybergogy, this is one of the theory that uh, if you wanted to combine between pedagogy and the technology in this cybergogy, not only about we are how we are uh, manage our classroom by using or integrating by the technology, but also how we are help our students to increase their metacognitive skill, knowing how to learn. This is a very important because we wanted to support them with the 21st century skill. They have uh, the way they are thinking uh, 
uh, should be uh, doing creativity and innovation and working into the collaboration like uh, Professor uh, Tarek Ilyas uh, make uh, creativity for the student by creating uh, the comic uh, of uh, project comic for their student. So based on the, uh, the background, I want to share to you about playing with artificial intelligence and virtual reality to pursue the 21st century skill, how the technology can be help uh, the student to uh, pursue the 21st century uh, skill. And then our menu today, we are going to discuss about why we do need 21st century skill, instructional design, aggregate into blended learning or hybrid, and investigating human computer innovation in the classroom. I will win my uh, presentation because we are limited about the time. So we understanding uh, the meaning of 21st century skill. I think all of us as educator, we know uh, about this, uh, the 21st century skill, the main point of 21st century skill. We hope the student uh, can be have a good communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and then uh, doing uh, creativity. Because yeah, you know, 21st century skill, this is refers to the skill to require enable in individual to face the challenge of 21st century award. Like I mean, uh, today uh, we are uh, into the globally connection. So, um, but sometimes we are get a misunderstanding about what is actually the 21st century skill. This is the uh, the, the the framework about 21st century skill itself. This is divided into three: about the learning skill, literacy skill, and the life skill. So we, if you are just focused into the learning skill, like today's uh, in the classroom as educator, we are manage everything to make our students to uh, get the communication, collaboration, and et cetera about the learning skill. Uh, we should remember about another skill, the literacy skill and life skill also. This is a very, very important skill. Yeah. So we need 21st century skill. I think that uh, this is to help uh, the student, our student to our young generation, to help them uh, to face their everyday life uh, situation. And then we are prepare them for, the, for their next future of their uh, career. So we should be also empower them uh, to uh, how they can be helped have a memory problem solving uh, to uh, uh, how to say to, to deal with their uh, some issue or concern related to the, their uh, life they have uh, experience so we are training them uh, before they are faced uh, their uh, next uh, for the five or uh, six next year that they wanna be will be faced uh, with the another uh, situation so uh, yeah, of course, um, this is not only we are talking about the technology itself, but also how we are manage everything in, uh, in our classroom to increase uh, the 21st century skill like social skill, critical thinking, creative thinking, communication, uh, information technology. This is a uh, cover with the, the I mentioned before about learning skill, life skill, and then as everything. So um, this is come back again in the hand of the educator, how they are manage the interactional design uh, with the learning uh, outcome uh, itself to achieve the learning outcome uh, itself. Like this is on the table, uh, you see that, uh, for example, the dimension of cell, the core skill, 21st century skill and the learning outcome. I think uh, we cannot be entering into our uh, curriculum or the lesson plan or our syllabus. So uh, like um, managing and uh, F -S -S expressing self, like empathy, self-awareness, managing emotion, problem solving, interpersonal or relationship, we should be entering also in our um, material, our uh, lesson plan. This is just only for the example. If you wanted to manage your um, material or you're creating your content uh, uh, to help them 
uh, to pursue the 20% skill. Yeah, this is the example of the, yeah, if you are actually implementation 20% skill in your learning and teaching process, I divide it into three uh, indicator. The first one about the academic, social, and civic. So I think in academic, yeah, we have so many problems. Like in my classroom, we are uh, teaching in the big um, number of the students, like 45. So we ask them to doing communication, to sharing their knowledge, to sharing their ideas. But from 45 students, uh, only maybe seven or 10 students, they are active in the classroom. So another student, they are passive. So this is a big a challenge actually, if we have a big a class. So what should we do to make them uh, to share in their uh, knowledge or their information uh, to show they have a good communication, demonstrate the technology, and then they have the problem solving. Um, based on my uh, research, I ask them to recording themselves uh, to speak, and then they will be uploaded into uh, YouTube. I think this is one of the solution if they don't want to speak in front of or their friend. But sometimes we have uh, a little bit issue when I'm asking them why you are not, um, I see your video, I'm watching your video, you are good in, in video, but why in the classroom you don't want to speak, you don't want to share your idea? What if the student answer? They are say to me, mom, I am anxiety and also I am um, not confident and then I'm afraid uh, my student will be uh, giving comment, uh, comment, comment and then correction everything about my uh, speech because yeah, you know, in speaking English, uh, this is very difficult for the student. So social collaboration and demonstrate adaptability. Yeah, I think um, in Indonesia, I think uh, when they are doing in the group, uh, also the student uh, still having a problem, only one or two students in the group, they are working together. So the last about the CPIC participate as a member of local, global and digital, uh, digital society. I think all of us here, we are educated Actually, we are implementation our uh, 20% century skill. We are uh, doing and then we are joining as a member of uh, global and digital uh, society. So for the student, I think, uh, yeah, this is mega lecture. Uh, you are very lucky uh, having, uh, we, we, you are invite some of the students from uh, university. So. Uh, this is also give them the stimulus to expressing their uh, participate, their participation as a member of local, global, and digital uh, society. So, well, this is the five case: twenty-first century skill and behavior that the teacher makes to think. Learning, learning is no longer a solo activity. The teacher is no longer the only person in teaching. Learning is no longer passive, books are just the start and teaching is then beyond in the classroom. I think uh, we, we must understanding about the, uh, this uh, case because yeah, you know that a student-centered learning approach by using technology, this is a very uh, benefit and then more uh, interesting for the student. Uh, so this is some of the benefit of the technology. We can be also use uh, uh, the, the, the some of the application and also to make our learning and teaching process more practice, effective, and efficient. So this is Indonesia condition. We are transitioning from online to hybrid. But yeah, I mentioned before that totally uh, more uh, some some of the uh, school still uh, not allow the student to use a mobile uh, phone or uh, laptop in the classroom. So the second about interactional design, aggregating the blended learning. This is uh, one of the, the blueprint. If you want to uh, designing your uh, material, they actually uh, you should be choose, uh, for example, what is your interaction, your learning theory, for example, the first one you choose the learning theory. Yeah, right now, uh, related to the 21st century skill and digital era about the contractivism. 
interaction actually for example you can use a sure or maybe um or d example like that interactional design uh, this is the activities you can choose uh, maybe uh, based on ganyan and even interactional design a uh, blended learning and then uh, this is your learning uh, strategy you cannot be creating your new model in teaching for example so well the example of assure actually assure this is the acronym from analyze learner step objective select method media material utilize media material require learner participation and in the end of the semester you can do the reflection or evaluation why this is a very important because um uh, sometime like this we are uh, uh design our curriculum our syllabus that actually this is available uh, from our ministry uh, but sometimes we are forgetting about uh, what is the student want the student need and then we don't we don't we don't categorize their uh, characteristic for example uh, you must be understanding about your student learning style before you are going to creating or designing your activities your uh, lesson plan in the classroom so after you get it, uh, what is uh, you analyze your student characteristic? What is their learning style? What is they wanna? What is they like? So also you can uh, be uh, formulate your uh, lesson, your lesson plan related to the student one, the student need, and the student like. Not from the teacher one, the teacher need. I think uh, this is for the simple uh, remember for us that the student they are unique. They are unique. They have um, they have voice and choice in the classroom. So I think uh, for related to this uh, research and development, we cannot be designing uh, everything related to the student uh, condition. So this is the example that I mentioned before about the uh, your um, interactional design. This is the example from controversy theory. You, we choose, uh, for example, from Jen Pesa or John Dewey, this is uh, the name of the method of uh, controversialism. And then uh, this is the example, the activities, and then even interactional design. And of course, uh, this is our learning outcome. How the student uh, can be get uh, their uh, doing innovation and doing creativity in the classroom. One of the best choice, I think this is very popular in Indonesia by uh, Fantainman or Edutainment. We can be used so many uh, like game-based learning. We can be used film, song, and also um, like comic, for example. This is related to the uh, Edutainment or Fantainman uh, theory, grand theory. So this is very effective. And then uh, this is very, um, yeah, uh, so many Indonesian uh, research about the entertainment itself, like by using YouTube, by using um, comic, uh, by using, um, for example, like a Pinterest or Instagram, and uh, so many. So uh, remember that uh, if you wanted to designing our material, that we should be understand and come back again with our um, the pedagogy. Uh, this is, I'm just so to you one of the example about uh, this is the um, Blum taxonomy. We choose uh, the best, uh, the best action, the best activities, Pandu. and the right uh, technology. Iya. Satunya so, sini um, saya nanti nomor berikutnya Pak Prof Tafir. So uh, maybe sometime oh, we are yeah, claim that. Iya. <laughs> Jadi di sininya yang Oke. Okay. Okay. So, um, so uh, just uh, some, some, sometime we are forget it about this problem uh, taxonomy that uh, uh, maybe sometime we are um, we are claim that yeah, I'm I'm doing in my classroom. I'm asked them to uh, doing creativity, but 
your action like you just ask him then to do this the describe to summary and then in your activities you just ask him then to do the social networking download it reading and some example uh, like that yeah i think uh, you are still um in the lower order thinking skill so what should we do in our classroom we should be a managed lesson plan into this uh activities into this action and we should be ask them to use this uh, technology i think um maybe this is simple but sometimes we forget it about uh, we have responsibility to help them to achieve the blum taxonomy creativity and doing innovation in the classroom this is some of my article launching in magazine about fun time itself and then this is my research about Fantamen and I, I have launched my book about Fantamen itself with uh, Santiana and some of our uh, friends also uh, with cyber socialization. Uh, we are collaboration some of the edutainment or Fantamen itself. Uh, so, this, so this is the example that I'm doing in my classroom that totally uh, uh, I, I am uh, planning with them with the material by using YouTube, game, film, and so on. So most of the students, they are uh, totally have positive response about that. So the last topic about investigating human computer interaction in the classroom, why this is a very important. We see that this is from John the way, because our students, they are not like us. So we must be accepted and teach differently. So remember, uh, our students, they are the Gen Z. They are familiar with the technology, the smartphone, but totally uh, they are still need our help about the metacognitive skill. Metacognitive skill. Yeah. So we understanding about the uh, human computer interaction. I see that um, this is uh, actually actually we are implementation this uh, when we are use smartphone when you when we are use a uh, social media. Uh, this is uh, the related to the com human computer uh, interaction uh, theory. And then in teaching English, uh, yeah, this is for example by uh, computer assisted language learning or computer mediated communication for, la for language uh, learning. That so many, uh, this is uh, related to the uh, make them uh influence for the human human uh, behavior like the student respond the student confident increase their uh, motivation in the classroom they feel happy and then also the last about they are more uh, having a positive engagement in our classroom so yeah i think that this is for example of um one of uh, uh based on my visa Actually, if your student have a good critical thinking, all of the 20% skill will be following, like communication, doing collaboration, and then creativity. So we should be increase them in the critical thinking first, and all of the 20% skill will be following automatically. And then this is for VR. Uh, virtual reality and then uh, artificial intelligence that uh, I am uh, doing in uh, in during the COVID-19 that so many we are used until right now. Uh, this is the example of my student uh, project. Yeah. This is the their learning outcome. They are uh, after playing with artificial and artificial, this is virtual reality. About virtual reality. This is the student uh, video presentation. They are doing creativity. They are presenting and then showing the virtual reality itself. And then another, they are uh, presenting uh, their presentation by using uh, mind mapping that you see here. Yeah, they are creating their video. Okay. 
So I mean, they hear the video. They are uh, creating their video for presentation, sharing their ideas. Not only uh, their face itself, but they are presenting uh, by this, uh, doing uh, like um, uh, sharing their uh, tutoriality and also uh, sharing their uh, mind uh, mapping, like uh, example like this. So this is in the classroom when I use artificial intelligence. Yeah, so come back to virtual reality. Um, we are- uh, Excuse me, doctor. I, I think yeah, your yeah. time is mostly over. Yeah, so you can highlight the conclusion to that. Yeah, this is the last. Yeah, artificial intelligence, this is the last. I just uh, give summarize about the benefit of technology if we are managed the big plus it really help us to make them to or to uh, apply the uh, student center learning approach so by using comic outdoor that I mentioned before by using manga tune so we are uh, in outdoor not only in the classroom because this is the student one, ma'am, can I be, we are in the garden, not in the classroom. So yeah, we go, <laughs> we go to the outdoor. Why I do that? Because the student one, the student me. So this is a wonderful, if you are listening your student uh, uh, voice and choice before you are designing your uh, material to help them to pursue the 21st century. So thank you so much for, uh, your um, uh, attention. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much for sharing, uh, Doctor. It's really, really, really awesome presentation with the uh, um, what's that? The the real examples you are doing in the classroom. So you you highlight related to the acceleration about the dis digital transformation. And then you also mentioned about some kinds of activities in the classroom that really need by the students and you really guide them uh, to the real, the real, what's that, a learning situation. All right, um, I will invite the audience who are, want to give a questions to Dr. Mutmaina. You can raise seeing your hand and then, or you can uh, type your, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, you, you may invite audiences to type in the chat box only. Okay, okay. So you may continue to the next. Yeah, all right, all right. Uh, to be an effective uh, time, you can drop your question in, in the, chat box and I will continue to the next uh, keynote speakers. Dr. Andy Asripan, are you here already? Yeah, he is here. All right. Uh, so what about Dr. Rima? After Dr. Andy, we can play his, uh, his YouTube. Uh, okay, I, I will ask. Pa, you can uh, play in the end of the session on the video only. Okay. okay. Yep. So. Dr. Andy, can you hear my voice? Okay, okay. All right, are you ready to, to give the, the presentation? Okay, sure. Okay. All right. Mainly white. Mainly white. He's a good father. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know that you really have a hectic uh, agenda. So it is really, really, really great to, to have you here. No with problem. Us to share your ideas, to share your experience during the teaching and learning process. All, All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. The time is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm really sorry for uh, the late uh, for joining uh, this uh, wonderful uh, event. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillahirobbilalamin. Salatussalamualaikum The Honorable uh, Director of the uh, Islamic Institute uh, Madura, 
and uh, the faculty and the staff and the students. Uh, my dear brother, uh, Dr. Abdul Gafur and, and the team, Bapak uh, uh, Abdul Wafi and the team. Uh, for this occasion, I would like to share one of the component uh, in curriculum, especially in uh, starting in the early childhood education until the study high school and the vocational high school in Indonesia. Uh, in uh, the part of uh, diagnostic test, it's called uh, how now the student multiple intelligence. And after that, we after now we analyze uh, every student multiple intelligence. So we we are designing a way of teaching that can uh, support and uh, develop their uh, multiple intelligence. And I think a digital tool is one of uh, uh, the way in supporting the student. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in, in the phenomena, I think we as a lecturer or educator, I think, and the teachers, uh, I think we, 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 we have found there are many uh, problem, uh, both in, uh, in the class, face-to-face uh, -face, I mean and uh, online classroom I think uh, we, we we cannot judge that uh, the problem is majority uh, from our student self but we have to analyze uh, the way of teaching uh, uh, is it is it uh, correlated with the way of learning of our student with uh, our the way of uh, teaching that we have uh before we we, we move uh, in the further i think we we have to analyze and then now uh in what area we are uh, right now let me move uh behind in education 1.0 i think that's the teacher center where the teacher uh, has the power uh, uh i mean that uh the sound of uh, teacher uh, or instruction of the teacher, that's, that's the God, I think. The, I mean that uh, whatever uh, the, the, the teacher uh, asks or write down in the blackboard or the whiteboard. So uh, as a student, we have to uh, memorize or write all the things, all the items. Uh, a teacher uh, asks to ask or write to us. <clears throat> and then in Education 1 2.0, that's the learner is recyclable of norm. And Education 3. Point, uh, that's the teacher as the facilitator. Where uh, this this period, we 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 have known about the social media. I still I remember when. Uh, when I was uh, in the last year of uh, uh, undergraduate student, it's in 2007, I think. I think that's the first time I I I, I uh, make uh, social media, Facebook, and then I try to to connect with uh, some uh, people in the world and some people uh, uh, in Indonesia. A uh, lot the famous people that I I, I try to add uh, them uh, to be my friend, and then uh, in that period, in that area, uh, we, we we can do the some collaboration, and also uh, we can uh, show that uh, the project and inquiry based learning was applied. And then there are there there are some collaborative interactive web tool, wiki blog, and Google Map. I think uh, we can use it. And then I think the computer is everywhere. But now we are in different uh, uh, area. The very short, I think, starting in two thousand and maybe five uh, or seven. And then now we are in 2020, 22 is one and, and 22. That's 
where we are in education 4.0, learn as a connector, creator, and uh, constructivist. So uh, the learner can access to expertly by using uh, some uh, like uh, Google Meet or or uh, Cisco Web Meeting or Zoom like uh, we are uh, in now. And uh, the learner as a teacher and the web as the curriculum. So we can see the diversity of network. So educator, uh, just a resource guide when uh, we can we can uh, lead them to access uh, in the broad uh, information on internet. And then the learner as connector maker, learner as the content uh, producer and sharer. What we will cover today, I divided into four uh, components. So the first is uh, the simple guideline for designing effective teacher material, and the, the eight multiple intelligence and careers, and some useful ICT tool uh, in education, and then the way, some of the way of uh, teaching. Here, the very simple uh, guideline for designing effect, effective teaching material, especially in uh, languages. Uh, here is, uh, there are some uh, factors that should be considered. Uh, the first one is the learner. In designing effective teaching material, we have to consider the learner. Where in the learner, uh, as I mentioned uh, just now uh, in, the, in my first uh, opening, that uh, we, 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 we have uh, to conduct uh, uh, diagnostic assessment or need analysis. We have to now uh, the student intelligence. We have to uh, uh, now knowledge about the learner, their experiences, their first language, first literacy, aspiration, interest, and purposes. And after that, we 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 have to consider the curriculum and the context. So uh, in our uh, nation, that uh, uh, the curriculum and the context, uh, we have to see the value that should be taught and the goal and the objective. And then the resource and the facilities. The teachers must be realistic, access to resource will impact on decision in material design. And then the personal uh, confidence and competence, the knowledge, the experience, the attitude, and how to use guideline correctly. And the last one is copyright competence, the restriction, implementation, and awareness. The last, uh, we have to consider uh, how much time that should be sh uh, uh, share the material, work in the team, and uh, how much time that should be organized the material. So after con consider, there are six factors here. Uh, here's some guideline. Uh, in designing the, uh, the ELT material. The first is ELT material should be contextualized, focus on the curriculum, experiences, reality, topic, and uh, first language or mother tongue. And then the material should uh, stimulate interaction and be generative. So the learner need to interact with uh, each other where uh, the combination uh, 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 for uh, skills here, uh, not only not only how uh, not only focus on the one skill, but also uh, how to uh, combine uh, the full skill and the sub skill uh, in every language. And then knowledge inherent in interactive teaching approach, use language in the real situation. And number three is ELT material should encourage the learner to develop learning skill and strategy. The material should uh, teach them how to learn and then take advantage from opportunities outside the classroom. And then the LT material should allow for the uh, for a focus on the form as well as function. Here, uh, how the student uh, uh, stimulate to develop independent language learner and then to focus the learner uh, in the language uh, structure or grammar. And then ELT material should offer opportunity for integrated language use. 
that I mentioned just now in the point two, uh, where uh, here uh, how 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 they uh, learner need to interact with each other, and then uh, here uh, how they in, uh, integrate it. There are some skill and sub skill in every languages. Not only I think not only uh, uh, in English, but also in 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 other languages. I think be able to introduce new skill in uh, incorporate uh, coping a new activity number six is elt material should be authentic the material have to be authentic the material must be written read and spoken and the tags have to be authentic and number seven is elt material should link to each other uh, to develop a progression of skill understanding and language item Okay, the material should be connected with other material for this uh, done and then material have uh, to organize uh, clearly and the material must be focused on the specific learning goal and the material must be created uh, to uh, uh, reinforce to early learning. And then ELT material should be attractive. Attractive, it means that the physical appearance use friendly and then uh, durability ability to to, to be uh, reproduced and the last one elt material should have appropriate instruction that should be effective uh, should be clear uh, that should be written in appropriate language and the last is uh, elt material should be <coughs> flexible flexible here is uh, how we use the material which allow both the teacher student to make choices and then the material designing should over flexibility uh, the material should permit the teacher to choose which procedure to, to 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 apply why the multiple intelligence theory uh, I I still remember the the, 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 the code uh, coming from the horde gun uh, say that uh in 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 uh, his book uh, uh around in 1983 is the frame of mind somebody here can uh, free uh touch in 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 internet uh, just uh type of frames of mind that's what in around 1980 yes if i forget uh he 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 stated that an intelligence is uh, the ability to solve the problem or to create the product that are value within one or more cultural setting. That's how I got it. So, uh, what Gardner in multiple intelligence uh, based on uh, its book, uh, we can uh, summarize that uh all the human being possesses all uh, the eight multiple intelligence uh, in the varying amount and then each person has a different intellectual compensation and then we can improve education by addressing the multiple intelligence of our students not only from uh, not only in childhood i think but also in the higher education uh, like in in the university and these intelligences are located in the different area of the brain and can either work independently or together left uh, left hemisphere and the right hemisphere i think uh this intelligence i think uh, may define the human space so uh the intelligence are developed to be a different degree and they are potential capability that everyone can activate by doing the right activity. And our tax here as a, as a lecturer or as a teacher, I think how we develop uh, or create so we can help our students to develop each intelligence and also to find out what kind of activity uh, make their learning easiest and most enjoyable so uh remember that that uh, uh intelligence is multi-dimensional and direct and it's not only about the logical linguistic comprehension which usually does at school so 
uh, here the the multiple intelligence they work on where the first one we have word smart or linguistic that's about the uh, well developed verbal skill and sensitivity to 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 sound or meaning and uh, uh, rhythm of words and uh, the second is number smart or mathematical that's about the ability to think conceptually and abstractly and the capacity to yes, listen doctor. yes your time is three minutes left thank oh yes yeah. thank you thank you uh, logical and numerical pattern spartial that's the capacity to, to think in image and picture uh, bodily kinesthetic ability to control uh, one's body movement and musical the ability to produce uh, 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 the rhythm uh, interpersonal the capacity to uh, detect and respond uh, greatly intra intrapersonal that's about the self awareness and, and in tune with inner feeling naturalistic the ability to recognize and categorize the plant animal and other uh, object uh, in our nature so here some useful uh, there are many uh, uh, platform that usually I think uh, in every minute, in every hours, in every day we, we use. So that's unconsciously, I think that can sharpen our uh, uh, multiple intelligence. And then uh, exactly we can invite them uh, to, to, to increase and motivate our students uh, to learn, uh, especially in any languages. So I think uh, that's all for my presentation today. Uh, thank you so much for this wonderful invitation. And after this, I can share this uh, presentation to, to, to make it clear uh, and then share to, to, to other. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. Andy. It's a very good presentation and an awesome insight related to the uh, presentation. And because we have only very limited time, if you have any question, you can type in the chat box and we will continue to the next uh, speakers. We have the last keynote speaker here, Dr. Siswanta MPDI. Are you here in the Zoom meeting? Dr. Siswanta, can you hear my voice? I think your microphone still mute. Microphone-nya masih mute, Pak Sis. Iya, yeah, betul. Okay, you can unmute first. Bisa di-unmute ya. Okay. Um, Maybe the, yeah. Pak Wafi. Assalamualaikum. Okay, okay. Yeah, right. Good evening. Okay. Yeah. Good afternoon, doctor. All right. Are you ready to be deliver your presentation? Yeah. Indo, tidak usah nyanyi dulu ya. Beliau bapak dekan kami ya. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Insyaallah. All I'm right. Ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. okay, Bapak Dr. Siswanto, because we have only limited time, your presentation is about 10 minutes. And after that, we can do the question and answer session. The develop sessions. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good evening. In the question, I want to present the result of my research in Madura about construction of thoughts on Islamic moderation among a community at Islamic boarding school in Madura. The result of the research contact of <coughs> this time. Uh, the first, the discourse of Islamic moderation is a study that continues to develop along with the emergence of the phenomenon of radical Islamic religious understanding and doesn't prioritize the beliefs of Greece. 
The emergence of violence has cried out in the name of religion is caused by misinterpretation of the Quran and the literal thinking in understanding religious doctrine. In the next uh, uh, <clears throat> conflict and violence in the name of religion contracts the divine spirit of religion, namely love and compassion, or in the Arabic language is Rahmah. About <coughs> uh, the study about Islamic moderation in Islamic boarding school, uh, actually uh, must receive attention as a form of evil to prevent acts of radicalism and extremism. Uh, <coughs> and it has an research in 2018, confirms that Islamic boarding school are able to display Islamic teaching that are harmonious, peaceful, tolerant, and not critical. So the Santran has historical legitimacy as Indonesian education, and since its inception has accepted its, itself as a type of moderate education. In the research, uh, I have the four focus. The first is typology of case of KIE styles on Islamic moderation at Islamic Body School in Madura. And the second, the pattern of internationalization of Islamic moderation values towards Santri carried out of by KIE at Islamic Body School in Madura. The third, manifestation of Islamic moderation thoughts from KIE in Islamic body school in Madura, and the last is the implication of the case thought on Islamic Buddhism, the religious pattern of Santri in boarding school in Madura. The method of research, uh, I, <clears throat> I choose the qualitative research program and the research type is pedagogy. The research location is the Pesantren Al Isla in Sumenep in, and Asahitul Kabir Islamic Body School in Pamukasan. And <clears throat> the, research, the research of the first focus the typology of Kai of Kai thought is categorized at neo modernism. Neo modernism. The construction of the Kiai thought departs from the existences of Islam, which is Kafa and Rahma. Islam is broad and flexible, easy and simple. Islamic moderation leads to the concept thought by the Quran and Hadith, and is exemplified by the Salaf scholars in the form of a middle attitude or al wasat is found in the Quran which is neither stream to the right nor to the left. And the second, the state of internalizing Islamic moderation values carried out by the Kiai to his students is carried out in the three states. The first state is the transformation of values, namely introduction the values of Islamic moderation to students. The second state is the value stack transaction stage, namely the oppression of the value of Islamic moralism to students. Santri make the value of Islamic moralism as a character in themselves. The third stage is trans, trans internalization. In this stage, the value of Islamic uh, moderation is applied in a Friday life, is followed in social interaction. The third, the, manif the manifestation of Islamic moderation in daily life is zoned by being tolerant, not blaming even people who have different views and beliefs. They respect the differences and diversity of thinking pattern in of each individual. The attitude of tolerance is applied to every Islamic boarding school, activity, and daily behavior. And the last, instilling the value of Islamic religion has implication for first giving birth to Santri who understand the history of the 
the entry of Islam by the Wali Songo guardians in the epilogue of who are full of tolerance. The second will have a moderate tolerant attitude of all local cultural values to don't conflict with the Sharia. And the third, it will produce students who love their country and nation and have the principle of Kobul Waton Minat Iman. I think uh, this is can I present in this question. I, I see. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much for sharing with us. It's very an awesome uh, information related to your topic. And as I mentioned previously, I would like to find out whether it is any question here. Oh, yes. From Ibu Heni Septia Utami. Uh, question to Dr. Mutmaina. Dr. Mutmaina, are you here? All right. Yeah. I will read the question. I'd like to ask you, can you give us tips to choose materials that really suit to the objectives of the study? Because there are plenty of materials, but it's so hard to find the suitable one. Okay. Yeah. Please, doctor. I, yeah, I actually have answered uh, her question on the chat box. Oh, you did, yeah. Yeah, yes, about, yeah, about the, uh, yeah, he, uh, she, okay, asked, okay. she asked me again about the, any recommendation of the website to download application. Yeah, actually, there are so many applications if you want to download it into uh, Google. But the difficult one is about if we don't know about what is the name of application, actually this is the very difficult. Like um, yeah, if you wanna use um like comic, you can use manga tune for example, or novel tune for novel, or anime TV for um how to say this is uh, related to the for increase the student um reading into uh, speaking. Actually, uh, so, so many, so many applications that we can be used. Uh, like um, uh, the last uh, Propteric uh, have shared about the comic. And also if you want to design in comic, uh, you can use like Kriasa. Or yesterday uh, we have a conference we in, in uh, State University Macaster. So we have a uh, Namely Nearpot. Uh, this is also a good uh, website if you want to uh, make uh, online interaction with your student. I think that so many that actually this is mentioned with um, my presentation. So for quiz or for test, you can use Quizales, for example. You can use uh, quizzes or you can use Quizlet. And that's so many for uh, to uh, about the student achievement. Uh, actually, uh, there are so many. So we need to be uh, the first thing to do. We must be understanding what is actually our problem with uh, the student. The student problem. We must be identify what is the student problem, and then uh, what is the learning outcome. I think this is uh, the most important one before we are uh, choose what is the right uh, technology, the right action, and the right activities in the uh, classroom. This is not about technology itself. So that's why I mentioned before that uh, we are as educator, uh, we must be help also our students to increase their metacognitive skill, not only for educator or for the student, but yeah, not only for the student, but also for educator, we must also uh, increase our metacognitive uh, skill. We must looking out, finding out whatever the best material. So one of one of the the solution also when we are uh, attending the webinar or conference like today, we can be get uh, some of information about the uh, the some of the application that we can be implement that we can be also adapt we in our uh, classroom. I think this is all uh, my answer. Thank yeah, you. Thank you very much. Maybe it's it's related to the student needs. What 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 uh, it's the student needs. So you can 
you can choose the appropriate uh, technology tool to help uh, the student learn. Yeah, like that, Kalia. Yeah. Right. All right. Uh, is there any question? So we can play a video from Dr. Rema. Okay. Yep. I think it's there is no question anymore. Yep. Yes, please. Roll off to okay. play that. Uh, let me share Dr. Rima because uh, what, what's wrong with Dr. Rima? Uh, Ibu Mutma. She, 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 she told us that she have a bad connection. Okay. okay. So let me share uh, her video here. Dr. Rima is from Syria. Is it? Uh, Yes, clear enough. Uh, now, celebration of women, global education and fraternity. Uh, uh, the subject of her research, research uh, the Muslim woman is the whole of society. Uh, now we begin. Welcome all. Uh, for a long time, this saying has been repeated, women are half of society. I see this, our dear reader, as a theoretical thing that contains a lot of injustice towards womankind. That's because I consider her to be the whole of society, and man is part of her and has this lay-on chair in chair in in that because her willing uh, is the uh, willing of society as a whole and here corrupted is the corrupted of society as a whole the access of the study the muslim woman between old and new uh, the uh, second models of sexual muslim women third summary The Muslim woman between old and new, we can't regard all of society models about to be following. This is the nature of the uh, inverse and a realistic thing. But society and especially women can be treated in the lay light of what she offer for herself. Her family and society uh, in what is called uh, accomplishment um, wait bang wafi kenapa wa nya yang muncul di sini as, uh, hmm? wa nya yang muncul di lahir ketika ini bunda danil <laughs> uh, oh iya yeah, sudah ya the domestic woman and sudah ya Modeled of models of successful um, Muslim women. What do uh, what do we mean by the effective woman? It's not enough for one to be successful, for him to be re uh, rendered a success. He has to affect those around him at least, so that we can be confident in his particular effect. Effectiveness, either um, in uh, executor uh, for of the verb to do, which means to do something with. So someone whose uh, angelist, um, energy, uh, energistic about what they love find it of importance to announce that thing in order to introduce what he does to people and to spread general benefit. Now, that we care about, care about from, uh, from what we've said are the uh, recommendation uh, that were produced by the conference, which we're uh, interested 
in of course even if all of it what implement it's enough to spread in the interest of making an attempt the most important recommendation which everyone agreed to where many uh, amongst them first changing the stereotype and the negative uh, concept around womankind by placing curriculum for um, eradicating in and opting all from uh, of uh, discrimination and violence, viol uh, violence uh, against women. Second, funding and uh, fighting in motiva motivating uh, environment, environment through uh, reinforcing uh, the pr uh, principle of egalitarianism by law and by faith in the member state of the Islamic Convention uh, Organization. Third, taking effective measure and expanding real effort to um, eradicate poverty among women and bettering their living condition and all other to rise with their situation and the uh, guarantee of uh, equal participation decision making uh, for the reinforcement of women's right to, par to parity of opportunity and uh, participation in all kinds of peaceful and humanitarian, humanitarian, uh, humanitarian activity, activity when it comes to decision making fight reinforcing law and regulation with a guarantee giving equal salary and benefits between men and women for the same same work uh, uh, designing designing a program that uh, eradicate uh, the negative attitude attitude towards uh, women inside the family and in sh uh, school and university and in various organization and institutes. Among the creative Syrian activity we mentioned, first uh, Shadia Arifai, the Syrian American uh, is Rafizikit. Uh, Uh, second, Dr. Daniel Khani, she came in first ahead of her nine competition to win the national competition uh, that's run by the Canadian Association for Dentistry. Third, Sirin uh, Hamcho, she received an international uh, patent for designing a wine uh, therapy. Uh, Turbid system in uh, 2015. She was recognized by BBC 100 Women and she appeared in the final of the program's international edit a ton in 2016. Five summary. And now, why is it possible to look down of these women who were up to um, to the uh, responsibility and were able to raise a Muslim generation that was cap uh, capable to managing uh, its life with wisdom and knowledge and success? And being uh, undocated uh, unduc uh, among this group doesn't mean be unsuccessful at all, but scientific accomplishment 
specifically uh, can be considered and looking up with what's happening on the other side of the world and a naturalization naturalization of the literary effort that dominates uh, society. Uh, Dr. Abdel Ila Al Khani, uh, the late uh, president of the National Conseil and the, in the Damascus and uh, International Arbitrator, uh, uh, has said, we are no longer in need of the words in, uh, of literary and literature and art as much as we need a generation that appreciates science and works in, in it with confidence step. Thank you. Uh, thank all of uh, for listening that a brief of my search uh, sorry there is yet plenty to cover in which you can reach me anytime to get further in details thanks all right thank you very much and then please give our all cannot speaker applause clap 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 clap, clap. Okay. okay and yeah ladies and gentlemen from the first half to the last program we have done plenty we would like to say thank you to you all keynote speakers and all the audiences for participation. Hopefully the presentation will give us uh, the benefit. I mean, I mean, and I mean. now we come to the closing session in the first uh, day. And I'm yeah. Eva Santiana from Siloa University, from the University Abdul of Wafi from Yayan Madura. Okay, as a moderator today, and another yeah. moderator would like to express my apology for the inconvenience during the session. And okay. on behalf of the committee, I would like to thank you all for making time for joining us here today. And I wish you all a pleasant day. It's time for me to say goodbye. See you, thank you, very much. See you tomorrow at the last session. Yeah, okay, student session. Student tomorrow. session, don't forget. Right. Thank you, Pak. 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 Thank Mantap. Aduh, macam-macam lah dia hobinya keren, hobi keren, keren koleksi banget. batu aki. Iya, yeah. iya, yeah, benar-benar. Koleksi keris juga. Koleksi keris.